This is ESPN on ABC, brought to you in part by Samsung QLED TV, the official TV of ESPN College Football. Most teams would worry about a third starting quarterback in as many years, but this is Oklahoma, you know. And we all know Jalen Hurts, the Alabama transfer, trying to do one of the few things his Heisman winning predecessors could not, lead the Sooners to a national championship. Across the field tonight is perhaps the best quarterback you don't know. Houston's De'Eric King. New Cougars coach Dana Holgerson knows offense, and in King he inherits a dynamic dual threat playmaker. It's Houston and Oklahoma in what should be a Sunday night shootout in the Palace on the Prairie. And we'll have a sellout crowd here at Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium as this first full weekend of the college football season continues with Houston and Oklahoma, the first Sunday game ever played in this great venue. Good evening, everybody. Welcome Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. We'll be joined shortly by Holly Rowe, one of the big stories of this college football season, particularly in this opening weekend. Jalen Hurts, yeah. after three seasons at Alabama, the first two as a starter, and he went 26 and 2 as the starter. He has transferred here to Oklahoma. And Todd, he has a very tough act to follow. <laughs> you think? The two guys before him set an incredibly high bar. Baker Mayfield transferred from Texas Tech. Lincoln Riley got a hold of him, turned him into a Heisman Trophy winner and a number one pick in the draft. Then Kyler Murray came from Texas A&M. Same school, same results. Heisman Trophy, number one pick. Jalen Hurts now, the third quarterback transfer in a row to start for the Sooners. He's different. He's not as pure of a thrower as those first two guys, but a much more powerful runner. And I'm fascinated to see what Lincoln Riley does with him in his offense. I don't think it'll be plug and play. I think he'll tweak it a little bit to utilize Jalen Hurts skill set as a runner. Of course, the goal, the national championship, something Mayfield and Murray were not able to accomplish, really not their fault or the fault of the Sooner offense the last couple of years. They were terrific. It's the defense that was dreadful. And with that in mind, a coaching change made by Lincoln Riley. He's brought in the bright young defensive coordinator from Ohio State, 39-year-old Alex Grinch. They'll play an attacking style defense tonight. And job one in his debut, and for the Sooner defense as well, Dealing with De'Eric King, the Cougars have a dual threat of their own. Very talented senior responsible for 50 touchdowns last season. That's an American conference record. The Nissan pregame rush is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. That's Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Tonight's game in Norman marks the start of a new era for Houston football. Their new head coach is Dana Holgerson. After eight years as head coach at West Virginia, he returns to Houston where he was offensive coordinator under Kevin Sumlin for two seasons a decade ago. And Todd, he is a great offensive yes. mind. The stats certainly bear that out. He's worked with a lot of very talented quarterbacks, including Case Keenum, when he was at Houston before. He says he's never had a quarterback <laughs> quite like De'Eric King. This guy is very gifted, and Oklahoma fans are going to think they've got deja vu because he's going to remind them of Kyler Murray. They're very similar physically in stature, but also in skill sets. Gifted runners, but excellent passers. Both De'Eric King and Kyler Murray had the ability to make every throw on the foot football field and they're very elusive dangerous runners and as you look at what these two guys did through 10 games last year almost identical stats between the Eric King and the Heisman Trophy winner Kyler Murray before the Eric King was injured for the rest of the year and speaking of Kyler Murray he's among the 80,000 plus the sellout crowd as he is a week away from his debut in the regular season as an NFL quarterback with the Arizona Cardinals they'll open at home against the Detroit Lions and I know he's eager and the Sooner Nation is eager to see how Jalen Hurts is going to fare tonight and it is amazing Todd how quickly he has blended in yeah. to this program. Yeah I mean the fact that he was elected captain after only being here seven and a half months tells you all you need to know about Jalen Hurts as a person as a leader his character and, and I really think he's going to play well not only tonight but all season for Oklahoma. 
As always, a great scene here in Norman. This will be the 124th consecutive home sellout for the Sooners dating back to the start of the 1999 season. Those in the sun are broiling right now as we're just past 630 in the evening local time with the temperature near 90 and high humidity. Fireworks being shot into the air. These folks have filled the seats and they've seen a lot of winning. Oklahoma is 113 and 10 in this stadium since the start of that sellout streak in 99. And here come the Sooners. Three college football playoff appearances in the last four years, including last year when they lost in the national semifinal to Alabama. They were 12 and 2 a year ago. Winners of their fourth straight Big 12 title. They are a substantial favorite to defend their conference title again this year. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Kickoff from Norman is next, and now a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. That's what you're wearing for. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. It's that familiar feeling. The smells, pads crashing, fans cheering, fight songs, chants and whistles fill the air. There's no doubt, football is back. If you want to make it rain, better stand and deliver. Do not speak! Champions have come from a select few. Will a new season bring new challengers? Juggling catches made for a touchdown. It's great to be home. It's great to be home. Familiar names, but new places. Jalen Hurts could be the third straight transfer that wins the Heisman Trophy. And chaos always finds its way back. Nick throws it downfield. Touchdown, And the legend is born. Houston is back. Oklahoma is back. Football is back. You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN from Norman, Oklahoma, down on the field. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Houston's won the toss, and they will get the ball first, and you will see an electric quarterback. De'Eric King has been playing quarterback for most of his life. His dad, Eric, installed a spread offense for his Little League team when he was just five years old after he saw a Steve Spurrier team that couldn't be stopped. So De'Eric's been playing this style, this system, since he was five years old. He went on to be a record-setting quarterback, breaking some of Kyler Murray's records in Texas State High School history. He even beat Jalen Hurts when their teams played in high school 71 to 21. He is an electric quarterback and the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, Alex Grinch, has said he's not just an athlete playing quarterback, he is a talented quarterback who is also athletic. He said we're actually going to have to put in play the Johnny Manziel rule. The first time he does anything abnormal in the pocket, you've got to bring him down and contain him. Can't wait to watch this electric young man who's been doing this since he was five start for Houston tonight. He is a difference maker, and he'll need to have a big night for Houston. The Cougars more than a three-touchdown underdog. They will have the ball first. And a big change in Oklahoma after the last three years with Austin Seibert handling punting, place kicking, and kickoffs. It's Gabe Burkett, a redshirt freshman, with a short kickoff down to Jeremy Singleton, who tried to cross the field, and that wasn't a good idea. The Sooners special teams drop him at the 17-yard line. So here comes De'Aaron King, his 23rd career start at quarterback. Last year responsible for 27 and a half points per game. That's 36 passing touchdowns, 14 rushing touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. And that was the highest such average per game in the country. Missed the last couple of games due to a meniscus tear. He said he's fully healthy in that right knee and ready to go. Senior from Mandel, Texas, just outside Houston. We open with Kyle Porter, the transfer from Texas at running back in an errant throw. They tried to go to the quick hitter to Marquez Stevenson, one of the best 
wide receivers in the country, and Todd Houston thinks it has one of the best receiver groups yeah. in the country. Well, they're very talented. They've got speed. They've got some length, and that guy, Stevenson, is their go-to guy. He's the guy with the game-breaking ability. They say with the same formation, Porter, who now shifts, and the three receivers to the right. A quick pop again, and Collard. Kenneth Murray dunked Stevenson at the 20 yard line. Well, they tried two similar plays in a row. Quick throws to Stevenson. This time they tried to bring him back inside. And Kenneth Murray, the surest tackler on this Oklahoma defense, there to wrap him up. And the fans fired up by the performance of the defense. They'd love to see a rare three and out and a great start to the Alex Grinch era as defensive coordinator. King running out of time, man room, and he's down behind the line of scrimmage. Murray again with John Michael Terry. Excellent job by John Michael Terry, just playing with discipline. Watch number 40, just maintain the edge right here and not allow De'Eric King to get outside. He shadows him, he mirrors him, and he stays with good leverage and allows help to come from the inside in Kenneth Murray. There's Dane Roy to punt, the 30-year-old Australian. CeeDee Lamb back deep for Oklahoma. Low line drive kick with the wind at his back, but it never got up into the breeze. Lamb dancing but cannot escape. Good coverage by the Cougs. And Oklahoma will begin near the 40-yard line. Once again, here's Holland. If we told you the story of how Jalen Hurts' career would unfold, you probably wouldn't believe us. It's so unusual. He became the first freshman to ever start a game for Nick Saban at Alabama, leading his team to two national championships before famously losing his job and never regaining it. Then, as a high-level grad transfer, here he is. He didn't know how to get into the team and get guys to accept him right away, so he did it in the weight room where he threw down this monster squat over 500 pounds on the bar. He gained instant credibility, and he said, the most important thing is I've been voted a team captain. That means the world to me. This isn't just about me. This is about us. We're here for just eight months, but just a couple of days ago, it's announced he's one of the team captains. He hands it off. Trey Sermon with one man to beat, and he goes out of bounds at the Houston 30. Big run by Sermon, the junior from Marietta, Georgia, part of a deep and talented running back crew. Now, Trey Sermon had a great year last year. Excellent blocking the right tackle. Adrian Ely, number 59, with the key block. Four new starters on this offensive line, and that first run, very, very promising for the Sooners. Ely, one of those new starting offensive linemen. 30-yard gain on the first play from scrimmage for Oklahoma. Hurts first pass as a Sooner. Charleston Rambo, another big gainer. And he's down at the 14-yard line. Grant Stewart and Javarius Owens combining on the stop for Houston. It was a beleaguered Cougar defense a year ago. They gave up 37 points per game. They were 118th in the country in scoring defense. Still managed to go 8-5 and five into a bowl game. Defensive coordinator Joe Cawthon came from Arkansas State. A lot of transfers on this defense this year, too. Hurts after the play fake. Dumps it off in the flag. Jeremiah Hall lunging for the pylon. And it's a touchdown. Well, Jalen Hurts picks up right where Mayfield and Murray left off. An efficient and quick scoring drive. And two throws on that drive for Jalen Hurts, both of them right around the line of scrimmage. Get the ball to playmakers and let them do the rest. Excellent effort by Hall reaching that ball to the pylon for the touchdown. View from one of the officials' hats. We also have pylon camera. Lots of bells and whistles in this rear college football edition of Sunday Night Football. American Conference. Officials on the field led by the referee Mike Roach big 12 in the replay booth and they're waiting for confirmation of the touchdown from David Ames Probably making to sure Checking to make sure he didn't step out of bounds. I think it, the reach to the pylon was clean It was just a matter of whether he stepped out of bounds before the reach Various Owens one of those newcomers they just signed him out of Northeastern Oklahoma junior college not long ago, they like his talent. If he couldn't prevent a 14-yard touchdown. That has been confirmed. 
Officially 61 yard drive in three plays and Callum Sutherland the new field goal kicker adds the extra point for Lincoln Riley. The offense continues to roll right along in Norman and the Sooners off to a quick 7-0 lead. Tonight's aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. Owen Field, Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, the home of the Sooners since 1923. The sellout crowd here tonight likes the way this one has begun. 7-0 Sooners, and Gabe Berkich kicks off for the second time. Bryson Smith, one of the fastest Houston Cougars. Up the numbers and across the 30-yard line, so better starting field position the second time around for Houston. After a 29-yard return, Jonathan Perkins made the tackle for Oklahoma. That first possession, the Oklahoma defense, you know, Alex Grinch is very aggressive. That's his mindset, his personality, a lot of press coverage, pressing the line of scrimmage. Wouldn't be surprised to see Dana Helgerson try to stretch the defense on this possession. See if they can get the ball down the field against this tight cover. Three and out with zero yards on their first possession of the night for Houston. Kyle Porter, the running back. Marquis Stevenson, the motion man. They give it to Porter. And he's ahead for two, wrapped up by Ronnie Perkins, the defensive end. Now Porter is a... Grad transfer from Texas, so very familiar with playing against the Sooners and what that rivalry is all about. So he'll play against them in the Big 12 championship game in Arlington, Texas last December. Won by Oklahoma. Two receivers punched to either side. They're wide, and it's still Kyle Porter, the running back. And a knee down, down on yeah. the far sideline on the catch by Cole McGowan. Well, it's a loss on the play back inside the 30. Here comes third and a little more than 10. And this Houston offense last year with Major Major Applewhite as the head coach was all tempo. I mean, they were going super fast. Dana Holgerson is a different system. They don't huddle all the time, and they play with some tempo, but they slow it down a lot more than what these used to. Dana back calling plays. He had handed off that responsibility for the most part to his offensive coordinator at West Virginia in recent years. Play clock down to seven. Third down, a little more than ten. And movement on the left end of the offensive line. That is also a concern for Houston. Here's Michael Roach. It's going to be hard to hear. Whether it's a voice or whether it's a clap, those line are going to have to keep their eye in on the football, particularly on third down passing situations. And that was uh, Josh Jones, their most experienced offensive lineman, called for the illegal motion. You know, the left tackle, they use 37th career start. They rush only two on third and 16, and now a third. And King's throw is too high and incomplete. Intended again for Cole McGowan. On both possessions, on third down, they were able to force De'Eric King out of the pocket and then play with discipline, not only on their rush, but on their downfield coverage. And that's that's excellent discipline. I'm impressed in two possessions with that Oklahoma defense. And here's Roy to punt again after a three and out. And C.D. Lamb back deep. Dana Holgerson told us the other day, I've always wanted an Australian punter. Roy's his first. I said, why is that? He said, well, they do a great job of flipping the field, directional kicking to help your coverage. Roy's a big guy, 6'7", former ice cream salesman in Australia, and that is a bomb that lands inside the 15. C.D. Lamb trying to pick up some blocks. C.D. Lamb across the 25 and out of bounds far sideline. They'll mark him all the way to the 34. So a 69 yard punt and a 27 yard return. I mentioned Royce from Australia. He won a kicking competition in 2016 
before the finals of the Australian Football League. He said that was like their version of the Super Bowl. He kicked it 79 yards, 73 meters. There were some prizes that came with it. He got put in the Pro Kick Academy down there, which has sent a lot of punters to the United States. He got a trip to the United States as a part of it, where he met Ray Guy, who gave him some tips. Great guy to get yeah. tips from about American punting. And Tom Herman, then the coach at Houston, was in dire need of a punter. He called over to Australia, said, send me the best guy you have. And they sent Roy. They said he's a little rough, but he'll be great. And he has been. Jalen Hurts runs out of bounds with a 10-yard gain. There is a flag back along the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be illegal hands to the face on Houston. Personal foul. Illegal use of hands to the face. Personal foul, legal use of hands to the face, defense, number 31. That comes to the end at the end of the run, 15 yards, automatic first down. Number 27 may remain in the game. His helmet came off as a result of the foul. Yeah, Jeremiah Hall, watch the left halfback, number 27. He's blocking on this quarterback run, and there's the penalty. Pushes his helmet off, and as you heard the referee say, because it was on a penalty, he can stay in the game. But this is Jalen Hurts running in between the tackles. He's 220 pounds. And you're not going to bring him down with arm tackles. Penalty against Parrish, sophomore. Defensive end, the new coordinator, Joe Cawthon, legs him, says he's scrappy, plays with great effort. Hurts, wise decision to keep the ball. Another big chunk play for Oklahoma as he goes down near the first down at the 30 yard line. You know what? That was something I've not seen Jalen Hurts do much. He got everything he could get out of that play, and I think he went down on purpose once he knew he had the first down. Of course, we saw Kyler Murray do that in this offense a lot last year. Ran for over 1,000 yards, but we always saw him running out of bounds or sliding, not taking extra hits. Jalen Hurts took a little page out of that guy's book. It is a first down, first and ten. Hurts escapes the rush and he gets chopped down near the line of scrimmage by Demarion Williams, another newcomer out of Highland Community College. Offense number 59, 10 yard penalty, first down. Adrian Ely, the right tackle. And Todd Oklahoma won the Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line last year, and hard to argue. Yeah. They had four players drafted in the first four rounds of the NFL draft this year. At the end of the season, that starting five had combined for 156 starts. The starters tonight, 12 combined starts, and they all belong to the center, the sophomore, Creed Humphrey, who is an outstanding player. Yeah, well, he's a great anchor to have, and these guys have been highly recruited. It's just their time to step up. C.D. Lamb slips down. He told us his number one goal to improve this year was run after the catch, get more after the catch. He tackled himself near the 40. They're the offensive linemen that we mentioned. Evans, Powers, Samia, and Ford all taken in the first four rounds. They had seven offensive players drafted and the kicker, Seibert, no defensive players. You know, and that's, that's the area that needs to be shored up by by Lincoln Riley and now Alex Grinch is new defensive coordinator. They've got to even out the talent pool on that side of the ball. Out of the pistol, Hurts pressured from behind, showing his elusiveness and he weaved down to the 32 yard line. Gain of seven. Pretty good coverage downfield right now for for Houston. That first possession, the passing plays for Jalen Hurts were short. They were quick, easy reads. He's trying to read down the field a little bit more, and Houston has shown some, some discipline coverage in the back end and enough pressure to put him on the move. Big third down play right here for the Houston defense. They've switched from a 3-4 a year ago to a 4-3. Dana Holgerson says, we can recruit excellent defensive linemen. We'll have enough to play with a four-man defensive line. They rush four. Hurts well protected, throws deep contact, and it's batted away. Intended for Nick Basquin with excellent coverage by Demarion Williams. Coach Cawthon told us he is their best cover corner. Yeah, he's in perfect position. He used the sideline as his ally and then actually even made a play on the ball. Had eyes on the football. That's perfect coverage on third and 12. Well, here's the first field goal attempt. 
It's 2014 by somebody other than Austin Seibert, at least as the primary field goal kicker. Here's Callum Sutherland. We'll get the first crack at it from 49 yards and into a bit of a breeze. They return the snapper Casey Kelleher and the holder Connor McGinnis. And that kick is wide right. He was a little inconsistent in pregame when I was down the field watching him. Maybe he was nervous because Todd Blackledge was hovering <laughs> nearby. So that's a win for the Houston defense, and it's still 7-0 Sooners. There's a new culture in College Station. Trevor Lawrence looks like a generational talent. We're back! We fight like Tigers. Well, it's a can't-miss college football doubleheader on ABC next Saturday. 3.30 Eastern will be at Clemson for Texas A&M and Clemson, then LSU and Texas in the Saturday night game presented by Wells Fargo. And Trevor Lawrence and Kellen Mond each led their team to victory in the opener against Georgia Tech and Texas State, respectively. Kellen Mond played great against that Clemson defense last year in College Station. A narrow defeat for Texas A&M on its home field. Houston trying to get something established. Their first two possessions, minus one yard of offense. Give it to that guy. You know, he, you need a positive play. Call a design quarterback run, and De'Eric King gets you four or five yards. Officially four. Seven minutes to go first quarter. It's been all Oklahoma, but just 7 nothing. Now he takes off running. And... Continues. It looked like he slowed down, anticipating a Sooner would be nearby, but there wasn't anybody in an Oklahoma uniform there, so he kept rumbling and has a first down to the 39 yard line, a 27 yard gain. That time, John Michael Terry, the defensive end, came on an inside stunt, and nobody replaced him on the outside of the defense. And that's what De'Eric King saw, and he was able to turn up the sideline unhindered for a big game. That's the first first down given up by this Oklahoma defense. Kyle Porter back in at running back. And he took the handoff and got dumped by Kenneth Murray, the preseason Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And Kenneth Murray did a nice job of reading and attacking downhill. Here he is right here. Watch him just read it, take a good angle to the football, and he's unblocked because he came from the second level and makes a play behind the line of scrimmage. They call him K-9. Kenneth Murray Jr. out of Missouri City, Texas. They have a number of players, Oklahoma, from the Houston area. King, nifty footwork, but he can't get back across the line of scrimmage. Down at the 41. Neville Gallimore led the way, the fifth-year senior from St. Catharines, Ontario. It was a late, delayed blitz that forced Eric King to have to move in the pocket. Well designed by Alex Grinch, and they bring up a third and long now because of the pressure they were able to create. Third down and 12. King pressured. The oh, ball that. pops out. And it looks like Houston got it back at the 46. Ronnie Perkins. The sophomore out of St. Louis made contact from King's left. This and is a, Braylon Jones, the center, got it back. This is a defensive line last year that only generated 11 sacks the entire season. It's just a four-man rush, and they do a great job of collapsing the pocket. Jalen Redmond, number 31, in there, missed all of last year with a blood clot problem. And missed all of spring, and they are really excited about what he can bring along with Ronnie Perkins on that play. So here's Dane Roy again, his last punt, 69 yards. Now the shorter field. Bounces it down there, and it's well covered by the Cougars. Elijah Gooden made the tackle on C.D. Lamb, a 36-yard punt. Again this season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. They cost Allstate a lot of money in recent years. Austin Seibert, four years as the punter and place kicker here, three years as their kickoff man. All-time scoring leader in Oklahoma and in Big 12 history. And we talked to Lincoln Riley yesterday. Do you have some concerns without Seibert? He said, yeah, well, he was terrific, but 
kind of excited about the newcomers too. Jalen Hurts, the late pitch to Trey Sermon. And he's swung down by Grant Stewart, but it's a 13-yard gain. And Todd, Coach Riley made the point about Seibert because he did everything. It was hard to practice sometimes. Yeah. He was so tired because they kick off a right. lot. They kick a ton of extra points yeah. that uh, sometimes you couldn't practice your teams as much as you'd like to with him involved in it. Yeah, probably had to have a pitch count on their kicker, yeah, which is a highly unusual, but he was so talented. You don't want him to be not at 100% on game day. Again, yardage and big chunks for Oklahoma. They're averaging 11 yards per play. Here's Trey Sermon. Nice cut. And that's 11 or 12 more. He got belted, but got the first down across the 35 yard line. Now, this is such a good running football team. And I know the offensive line is new, but this is the counter trap. They pull the backside guard and tackle. Excellent patience by Trey Sermon. And I know they've had back to back Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. But this team's ability to run the football is the key to their offense. Last year, they averaged 247 yards per game, and really the last two games, they, they were off that mark or it would have been higher. Four receivers now for Jalen Hurts, who's three out of four passing. That ball caught in a crowd by Nick Basquin. Another double-digit yardage gain to the 49-yard line, 16 yards. What a play by Lee Morris, though, the other wide receiver who was blocking for his fellow wide receiver. If Morris doesn't get that block, that play is either deflected and it might even be intercepted. Watch the block because Stewart, number three, read the play quickly. But Lee Morris did an excellent job of getting his block. Aspen's a fifth year senior. He's already graduated with a degree in management. He's battled injuries. He's actually officially in his sixth year. Granted an extra year by the NCAA. Hurts, deep drop, fires over the middle, caught. Another first down, Jeremiah Hall, who has scored the only touchdown in this game. Good for a 12-yard game. That was excellent work by Jalen Hurd. They want play action to try to get a chunk play down the field, but C.D. Lamb was covered. He was not open. That was the primary look. And Jalen Hurts did a nice job finding a secondary receiver and hitting him over the middle for another first down. Five out of six for 56 and a touchdown. Recurring problem from a year ago for the Houston defense giving up a bunch of plays of more than 10 yards They win that down Chase Sermon spun down by David Anini With help from Alexander Duke last year The Houston defense gave up 224 plays of 10 yards or more only two teams gave up more yards more plays of 10 yards or more. Oklahoma and UConn now that's not company you want to be in. No. First negative yardage play tonight for Oklahoma. Still averaging more than 10 yards per play. Jalen Hurts, lots of time provided. Good throw. A.D. Miller in the catch. Another first down at the Houston 28. 15 more for the Sooners. And another good job by Lee Morris. Watch number 84 pick up the corner blitz. And that's going to allow Jalen Hurts a little more time to leave the pocket and then throw on the run. Beautiful throw for the first down. Well, he wasn't the starter at Alabama last year, but I know you believe he improved as Absolutely. a thrower during that year where he backed up to a tongue of Iloa. He throws wide open. Another first down. Braden Willis. Listed as a fullback tight end, H-back type. Sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Just his second career catch. Well, he fooled the Houston defense. He blocked for a two count on that play and then released late into the middle and nobody picked him up. But I, going back to your point, Sean, I really think when he made the decision to stay as a backup, and be coached by Dan Enos, the quarterback coach, and Mike Loxley, the offensive coordinator. I thought Jalen Hurts as a quarterback developed, and his stats coming off the bench were much better than his first two years. Interesting play here, pulling lineman. Hurts started one way, then came back to follow the pullers. And it's a first down at the one-yard line. First and goal for Oklahoma, trying to add to a 7-0 lead. Now this is a quarterback counter. Beautiful red zone play. You pull the guard and the tackle, and you have a lead back as well. That's three blockers out in front of a guy in Jalen Hurts, who when he starts to tuck the ball and run, he becomes like a running back. He doesn't run like a quarterback. He runs like a running back, particularly in the red zone. 
Well, he's going to go under center. They go to an I formation. And he calls the timeout. With 17 Oklahoma seconds to go in the opening quarter. Sunday night kickoff from Norman, Oklahoma. Sooners leading 7 to nothing. They're down on the goal line again. Jalen Hurts just used the timeout. They had 12 men on the field. Now they're ready to go. On first and goal from the one. Terrific start for Hurts. Seven out of eight passing. Brady six yards and a touchdown. Play action fake to Sermon out in the flat. Might have been another touchdown for Jeremiah Hall, who scored the first one, but he fell down at the two. Yeah, it wasn't the best pass, even though it was a completion. That, that's a ball that Jalen can throw a little bit better. Keep that ball out in front a little higher so he can run to the end zone. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Heading to the second quarter here in Norman, Oklahoma, as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Sooners leading seven to nothing and hoping to add to it. Second and goal from the two yard line. Might be a chance for Kennedy Brooks to get his first carry of the game. The other talented back in this Sooner offense. There's number 26 to the right of Jalen Hurts. Trey Sermon to his left. They give it to Sermon and a good tackle. By Grant Stewart looked like it might be a walk in yeah. touchdown but Stewart the junior from Conroe Texas a big play. Well, tackle guys high in this part of the field like that so you don't allow them to fall forward into the end zone and break the plane. That was an excellent tackle by Grant Stewart. There's third and goal a half minute into the second quarter. 11th play of the drive. Jeremiah Hall in front of Trey Sermon. Hurts keeps. No signal yet of a touchdown. He's well over the goal line. I mean, he was he was clearly over the goal line. He got a push from behind by Kennedy Brooks, but I thought he was way over the goal line. We're on the field. We're on the Scott Sewer to the goal line. Fourth down. He doesn't have it there, but watch the push. And right there, I think he's, well, of course, you can't see where he is, but I think he and the ball are over the goal line. He's standing in the end zone. Fans seeing some of the same replays that we are seeing. Rolling on the field with a runner who stopped short of the goal line is on the third review. You know, unless it's, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I thought he clearly was in the end zone. I think you clearly made that point and you are right on top of it as usual again after a long offseason I know nobody welcomes the start of college football more than you. Yeah well I love it and I don't do a whole lot other than that so I'm excited to get back in the saddle. Mike Roach referee love his accent he's a native New Englander part of this. American officiating crew. Yeah, he's stand, yeah, he's standing in the end zone. That's a touchdown. I mean, the ball is all the way in the end zone. After further review, number one had possession of the ball beyond the goal line. Therefore, it is a touchdown. His first as an Oklahoma Sooner. Well, he had 23 career rushing touchdowns as the Alabama quarterback. You get in the red zone with him and Trey Sermon and Kennedy Brooks and a center like Creed Humphrey and the Sooners are going to be hard to keep out of the end zone. All powerful runners. Good start. And the extra point up and good from the red shirt sophomore Callum Sutherland.
tomorrow. There's still more on this first full weekend of the college football season. Cap off your Labor Day with an appealing matchup. Number nine, Notre Dame off the trip to the college football playoff a year ago at Louisville. Trying to rebuild under Scott Satterfield. He'll make his debut as Cardinals coach, head coach at Appalachian State the last six seasons. 12-1 and one a year ago for the Irish. Ian Book among the 14 returning starters, their quarterback. What do you think of the Irish this year? I think they're going to be good again. You know, I, I don't know if they're playoff caliber, but I'll tell you what, they've got some talent. And we saw Ian Book a couple times last year, and I think he's a really good quarterback. He was the right guy for them last year when Brian Kelly made the switch. And he's a year older at this point. The only loss was in the national semifinal, and Notre Dame went down to Clemson. There's Gabe Barkich kicking off again with the breeze at his back this time. And Bryson Smith will take an E about three yards deep. Let's go to Holly. I'm down here in the end zone. Kyler Murray was just uh, celebrating here on the field. He's taking pictures with fans. How are you? We don't know. It's somewhere in the stadium. How are you? Hi. That's good. I'm good. How are you? I'm so great. Okay, so the big news is you've deb debuted the uh, Nissan Heisman Trophy yeah. commercials. How do you think you did in those commercials? I thought I did really well. Um, Your acting was on point? I felt like it was. I mean, uh, I think I look good on the TV, but, uh, you know, I need, I need more practice. Let's put that on. Okay, we'll give you some more practice. Um, you know, speaking of practice, Jalen Hurts getting his first start. You were just in this position yourself a year ago. What are some of the feelings that are kind of coming up in you that you're like, oh, my gosh, I remember what that was like? Um, I, I think our situation is just a little different just because, you know, he's played in a lot of big games. Me, uh, I had to wait my turn. He, you know, he kind of has already known what it's felt like. So uh, this is kind of his, you know, coming out party for the Sooner fans. And for me, it was more about just being myself, trusting my abilities, and going out and playing my game and trying to lead these guys to a win. So. I know De'Eric King's a kid that you kept your eye on in high school. He broke one of your records in Texas uh, 6A. He did. I'm sorry. Did you know I didn't know that one. I didn't know that one. <laughs> I hate to break that to you. But what do you think about him? I know he hasn't gotten loose yet, but I know you like his game. I mean, I don't want him to get too loose out here, but you love to see a guy of his stature uh, play the quarterback position. Um, you know, and not only be able to run it, but also be able to throw it because, you know, they like to they like to marginalize small guys. So um, I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. Uh, and I hope I hope he succeeds. All right. What's your first game next week? Detroit. At, at, at home. At home. Yeah, at home. Okay. We've got a lot of air raid ties in this game with Lincoln Riley, Dana Hogerson. They're some of the guys that invented it. How have you adapted to that Cliff Kingsbury system so far? Um, I'm very fond of it, and I, I can't wait for Sunday. All right. So good to see you. Uh, you too. Thank you. You too. All right, Holly, a couple of runs for Kyle Porter. A total of five yards. Here's third and five for Houston. Haven't converted on three third downs yet. De'Eric King gets collared short of the first down by Kenneth Murray. About two yards short of the line to gain at the 33. Sean, this Oklahoma defense doesn't look anything like what we watched last year. We saw them at West Virginia give up over 700 yards of offense. They are collapsing the pocket by rushing only three or four. And then Kenneth Murray, that's the one thing we knew about this defense, is he is a tackler, 155 tackles last year. And they are shutting down this Houston offense. The injured Cougar was their starting right tackle. Jared Williams, returning starter right tackle. He did walk off the field under his own power. Already the third three and out for the Houston offense, for the Oklahoma defense. Things were hard to come by for the Sooner defense in recent years. Dane Roy, line drive punt, fair catch made by C.D. Lamb. At the 23-yard line, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. It's the exclusive home for the weekly Les Miles All Access Show, and if you haven't seen that, you want to. Plus, you'll get more than 50 men's basketball games, hundreds of other Big 12 sports, including women's basketball. I think they mean games and other sports. Are there hundreds of sports in the Big 12? I don't think so. Sign up today. That's why you should always read the cards before the game at ESPNPlus.com. I don't think they play hundreds no, of sports. I don't think. 
I might be wrong. We need to lay them all up. Hundreds See. of games for sure. Boy, I was happy for Les Miles to get that first win. Please adjust the game clock for 12 minutes, 22 seconds. 12 2 2. Thank you. Happy for our former colleague, Mac Brown, with his big win mm -hmm. over South Carolina and their opener as well. Kansas beat Indiana State. Yes. A little bit of a tight one. Yeah. But here comes Oklahoma dominating this first half, the number four team in the country. Leading Houston 14 to nothing. Kennedy Brooks stopped for no gain. Grant Stewart made the tackle. I mean, I think if you pulled Sooner fans, Todd, what has made you happier right now? How seamlessly Jalen Hurts has blended in. For the play of the defense. Yeah. I'd say the play of the defense. Yeah, I think I think that's a bigger plus because Let's face it, Sean. The, the Oklahoma's offense the last two years has been good enough to win a national championship if their defense wasn't as bad as it was. I mean, they couldn't get beyond the semifinals because of their defense. They gave up 99 combined points and losses to Georgia and Alabama, their last two playoff appearances. Jalen Hurts threw a hole, stood up by Grant Stewart at the 28. Well, last year, Oklahoma. Gave up 33 points per game, 108th in the country, 114th in total yardage allowed, and only 11 takeaways. They had six interceptions all year. They brought in Alex Grinch, two other defensive coaches with whom he had worked at Washington State, Roy Manning and Brian Odom. Hurts just standing there without any pressure, and he fires for a first down. To Grant Calcaterra, first catch of the season for the all Big 12 tight end from a year ago. With patience by Hurts, staying in the pocket, just waiting for something to open. Calcaterra, I think he's on the verge of having a huge year this year. Very much like Mark Andrews, who went from 31 catches as a sophomore to 62 catches as a junior playing with Baker Mayfield. And Calcaterra, Calcaterra is a, a very similar kind of player in that inside wide receiver spot. Jaden Hazelwood, highly touted freshman, with his first touch, with the man who came in motion. He gets welcomed to college football as he was stood up at the 38 yard line. Because of the success of their offense and the individual wide receivers in recent years, they are really recruiting yeah. a lot of the best wide receivers in high school in the country, including this guy. Yeah, they, well, they had three of the top rated wide receivers in this recruiting class all come to Oklahoma. They play a lot of guys. They throw it to a lot of guys. And so there's no fear of not getting on the field if you're a, a top flight wide receiver in this offense. Hazelwood, the most highly touted of the three true freshmen. Five star recruit consensus. After the play action fake hurts to Calcaterra again. He got belted by Deontay Anderson. But he held on for a first down into Cougar territory at the 48 yard line. Great route. Watch Calcaterra. He's going to fake like he's running a crossing route and then right up the seam. Lincoln Riley loves to do that. Show one route, get the defense to react, and then right up the seam for the quick throw and Hurts on target again. Hurts is 11 out of 12 for 109 and a touchdown. And then he's rushed for 46 yards on six carries. And the other touchdown, design quarterback draw. And he got walloped at the 43 yard line by Peyton Turner. Jalen's from the Houston area. He's familiar with a lot of these Houston Cougars. He played a memorable high school playoff game, his final game in high school. With his dad, the head coach at Channel View outside Houston, they played Manville, a perennial power, with De'Eric King, their quarterback. Yeah. One of the players on the defense for Manville that was Jordan Carmooch, now a linebacker here at UH, and he said the thing he remembered most was how hard it was to tackle Jalen Hurts. Wasn't that hard to tackle Kennedy Brooks that time, and a nice play again by Peyton Turner. And we didn't like it. Holly mentioned it earlier. Jalen Hurts didn't like when we brought up the high school game against yeah, the Eric no. King and a few of these other Houston Cougars. Yeah, he bristled a little bit. Yeah, he said, I was the only top prospect on my team. They had about 20 guys who were being recruited by D1 schools. And that's pretty much factual. Deep throw wide open. C.D. Lamb a touchdown. Busted defense. And you don't want to lose sight of one of the best wide receivers in the country who just made it 20 to nothing. Yeah, you're right on the busted coverage because this was not a trick em route. 
CeeDee Lamb was going deep the whole way, right up the seam. Jalen Hurts, after he moved up in the pocket, able to throw on the move, and he knew he had a wide open guy, just get him the football. Third straight game with a touchdown reception for Lamb. Last year he had a streak of seven games in a row with a touchdown catch. He's the focus at wide receiver this year now that Hollywood Brown has gone on to the NFL. Hallam Sutherland in the extra point. It couldn't have been scripted any better for the Sooners. Jalen Hurts has been tremendous. And the defense pitching a shutout with 8.09 to go in the first half here in Norman. ABC's primetime college football is brought to you by Pacific Life. 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Hollywood Browns here. I think a lot of these fans, maybe Tyler Murray, the Arizona Cardinals, the Baltimore Ravens fans, would like to see these guys you know, <laughs> back home around their NFL teams yeah. getting ready for their opener. One week from today, right? Yeah. They're here to support their old school, the Oklahoma Sooners. We now lead 21 to nothing as Gabe Berkich kicks off again. Jeremy Singleton shoved out of bounds. Taken down well across the boundary, no flag. Here's Holly. Well, guys, that last touchdown pass had some good chemistry behind it. Jalen Hurts to C.D. Lamb. They hope that will be a good combo all season. It really started on Jalen Hurts' recruiting visit. He got here in January. The first five days he was in town, he actually crashed on C.D. Lamb's couch. They became good friends. They've had a good chemistry. And Lincoln Riley said one of the things he's really been working with Jalen Hurts on is to kind of take some of the robot out of him. He's had so many different coordinators, six different coordinators or offensive coaches in his college career. And he's like, he wants him to quit thinking, just be instinctive. And I think we saw that on that last play. Well, absolutely, Ollie. His move in the pocket and throwing on the run, that was an instinctive play. Nothing robotic about that. Play action pass, De'Aaron King pressured and throws incomplete. Tenet for Cole McGowan. That was the 15th play run on offense by Houston. Meanwhile, Oklahoma has 16 first downs. New quarterback, four new offensive linemen. So far, no problem for the Sooner offense. The machine just keeps on humming. Lincoln Riley, just a tremendous play caller and teacher. Bill Beatonbow, the offensive line coach, one of the best in college football. They don't look like they've missed a beat. King, two out of five, passing for zero yards. Checks it down to Kyle Porter. He weaves close to a first down. Kenneth Murray, another tackle. He has demonstrated outstanding speed at 6'2", 243. When I was at Oklahoma's practice the other day, it was a, it was a called a walkthrough. But when I watched the defense, it was a run through very fast pace rep after rep after rep. They ran 178 plays in this practice and it was fast pace and I didn't see them make any mistakes. They were on point in sync and where they were supposed to be. And that's the way they look tonight in a live game situation. And Houston convert on third down for the first time tonight. Confusion. King makes something out of nothing, makes a lot out of nothing, and dives down at the 39-yard line of Oklahoma. They'll spot him back at the 40. Oklahoma has had consistent pressure on the pocket. Kenneth Murray's unblocked. Two guys unblocked, and you see the elusiveness of De'Ari King. And then he didn't do that last year very often, get down. When Dana Holgerson got there, he had a 40-play tape of Kyler Murray because he said this guy was the best in college football at protecting himself after he ran the football. All 40 plays were just Murray running out of bounds or avoiding a tackle or sidestepping a rush. And King got the message. Marcus Stripling, the freshman, number 33 for Oklahoma, who they think is going to be a star, whiffed in the backfield to allow King to get free. Timeout, six and a half to go till halftime. A rough start for Dana Holgerson back at UH. 
Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe back in Norman, Oklahoma. The fourth-ranked Sooners leading Houston 21 to nothing. The Cougars just picked up their second first down of the game. And have it first and 10 from their own 40 with De'Aaron King. Waiting for the snap. Kyle Porter, the running back. They come after him with pressure. And King fired. First catch of the night, Marquez Stevenson. Showing his speed, he got blasted at the 40 by Delarian Turner Yell, the new starting safety for Oklahoma, gain of 19. Now an open. Houston now going to go with a little bit of tempo. That was a beautiful route by Stevenson. He did the same thing we saw Calcaterra do for Oklahoma. Showed crossing route and then went back outside and created separation. And you got to get him involved if you're Houston. I mean, he's he's one of your playmakers. His second catch of the night for 23 yards. They've targeted him three times. They move the front. Derek King said that's one of the things he did expect from this new Oklahoma defense. He takes off running. De'Aaron King inside the 20 and wrestled down at the 18-yard line, 22 on the ground for the senior quarterback. This is a nice design. Look, the, he shows like he's running left. It's a quarterback run all the way. The right left tackle, Josh Jones, does a nice job pulling out in front of the play. And now Houston in the red zone. Looked like Oklahoma might have been offside. As they were going to bring pressure again. Mike Roach, the referee. Best drive of the night for Houston Before by far. Snap, ball start. Offense number five. The five yard penalty, first down. Did you get that? Do you want me to translate? False five, start. Number five. Number. <laughs> number five. N U M B A. Well, that's, that's not the kind of penalty you have. You finally got something going, you got some momentum, you're in the red zone. And you set yourself back five yards against this Oklahoma defense that has played extremely well here in the first half. So now if you're De'Ari King, you want to get part of this yardage back. Get yourself right back in that good area in the red zone. More pressure brought by Coach Grinch. The check down to Kyle Porter. Nice move in the open field. And he's into the end zone for a Houston touchdown. Trey Brown missed the tackle. And Porter did the rest. Yep, Trey Brown is out there one on one. And you know, teams in college football, they stop tackling about a week and a half before the season starts. No more live tackling. You just trust the foundation and the techniques. And Trey Brown got left behind by Kyle Porter and a really nice job by De'Eric King finding an outlet receiver under pressure. Porter. Played in 27 games at Texas. Transferred in to Houston this season. Has his first touchdown as a Cougar. And their first touchdown of the season. And of the Dana Holgerson era. The extra point good by Dalton Witherspoon. 23 yards on the score for Houston. It's 21-7. to This season, Taco Bell again celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these Sooners. Awarding the best student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings. See how your school can compete. Dalton Witherspoon kicks off. Here's Trey Brown trying to atone for the missed tackle. He might just do that. He's across midfield and upended. There is a flag down. Garrison Vaughn made the tackle for Houston. Might have saved a touchdown. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 87. After this, he's the goal, first down. Well, you don't do live special teams too much. Take a look at the top left of your screen. Right there it is. That's the block in the back. And uh, that play comes back. Mm. Nice job by Trey Brown trying to atone for the missed tackle, but all for naught. Looked like he was already kind of going down. Negates a 53 yard return. Now, you and I can speak much more informally. Is that, I'm going to bet a word now. Can I start that over? We can speak with a better background about officiating this year because we were the officials for the Georgia right. Spring football game, which I know everybody saw on the SEC network. 
It was hard. It was fun, and it was challenging, and it was it gave me a, a whole new appreciation what, for What was your position? Happened. I was the head linesman. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was the back judge. Yeah. And just where you have to keep your eyes and all the things you have to look at and how disciplined you have to be, it was, it was interesting. We thank Steve Shaw, supervisor from the SEC, and a great group of officials who taught us a lot. Taught us enough to know that that seemed like a bad call. And now we say that with much more background. Jalen Hurts <laughs> spins ahead to the 13 yard line. Of course, those guys were so nice to us in the SEC that we promised we would never say a disparaging That's word right. about the official. They were really not. It's just mild criticism. We would have brought in Bill Lamagne, our rules expert, but apparently Bill's uh, having a pretzel or something. Did Bill show up? There's Bill. Bill's here. I think it's the best Bill's ever been so far tonight. From the 13 yard line after a gain of four, Hurts under duress. Just so effortlessly got away from it, and now he takes off running and gallops across midfield to the 44 yard line of Houston. Chased out by Javarius Owens. It's a 42 yard run for Hurts. They wanted to hit CeeDee Lamb on the crossing route. But watch Jalen Hurts see just a big area of green open up. Picks up a nice block down the field. That was number 54, Marcus Marquise Hayes, with a nice block leading the way. The reason Marquise Hayes was down the field blocking is because that is a screen pass with a crossing route going behind the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma loves that play, but Jalen Hurts turned it into a quarterback run. He has played just about a perfect first half. 12 out of 13 passing for 154 and two touchdowns. And he's coming up on 100 yards rushing. Donovan Newton made the tackle on Trey Sermon. Newton, a sophomore, didn't play very much at all last year. But he won the starting middle linebacker job in camp. There are the numbers. Hurts more than twice as much total offense as the entire Houston team. And not in a big hurry here with plenty of time left. Just under three minutes now remaining in the half and two time outs for Oklahoma. Ooh, a little flea flicker and Hurts. One of the rare deep balls tonight. CD Lamb with some contact in the end zone with Demarion Williams. No flag and it's an incomplete pass. Well, Jalen Hurts threw this ball on the wrong side of CD Lamb. C.D. Lamb was expecting this to go over his left shoulder. A little trickery in the backfield, great protection, but that ball needs to be thrown more to the middle of the field. Because it was thrown back over the other shoulder, it enabled Demarion Williams to make a play or be in the way. There was no safety help to the middle, and Jalen Hurts just threw that over the wrong shoulder. It was a very experienced back judge. I think that should have been pass interference. <laughs> Hertz takes off running. And he has a first down. Powerful run. Uh -oh. And the ball came out. Was he down? No. The officials say it's Houston's ball near the 30 yard line. You know, we've seen Jalen run out of bounds. We've seen him slide. We've seen him do some things to avoid extra contact. That time he's fighting for the extra yardage. Might have been a little frustrated that he missed the long ball. Going on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 83 for pulling the player off the pile. 15 yard penalty to be added from the fumble recovery spot. First down for Houston. This could be a huge break That's for the Cougars the because the game. they were not stopping Oklahoma again. They, they've had trouble stopping them from doing anything offensively. And watch Jalen Hurts. He's going to put this head down and try to fight for extra yardage. And from behind, there you see the ball ripped out. Number 30. Or no, who was that? Maybe I, David Anini from behind there, number 12. We had two guys both going for the football. Alexander Duke and Anini both trying to rip it out. One of them got it. Well, the first turnover for either side tonight. All right, we said Jalen Hurts has been just about perfect. Long, incomplete pass. And a lost fumble. It's still hard to argue with how outstanding he has been. 
here in this first half. It's 18 straight games now with a takeaway for Houston. Out wide it goes, Jeremy Singleton on the completion from De'Eric King. So 2.24 to go, Houston at midfield. If they could get a touchdown here, Todd, yep. for as much as they've been dominated yep. in this first half, uh, they have to feel really good. They got a good play from their defense. They've got two timeouts, and they got a veteran quarterback running the show here with the ball at midfield. So I think they're trying to adjust to the late shifts. Oklahoma is showing some line stunts and shifting. And Dana Holgerson trying to counter that with later snap counts. Now Porter's seen the bulk of the action at running back. Here's a little screen. Marquez Stevenson with some running room. And he goes out of bounds near the 20-yard line. They'll mark it at the 20. Boy, this That's is a 30-yard game. Beautiful design. They had a screen both ways. And they faked the screen to the left and came back to the wide receiver screen to Stevenson on the right. And it really fooled the Oklahoma defense. Good play call by Dana Holgerson and excellent execution by the Cougar offense. Holgerson, 48 year old Iowa native, very familiar with a lot of the coaches on Lincoln Riley's staff. He and Lincoln Riley were together for several years at Texas Tech under Mike Leach. Porter stood up after a gain of one. They're playing tonight without Patrick Carr, the Cougars leading. Rusher from a year ago returning with more than 800 yards, but uh, undisclosed injury. They think he'll be back in the next week or two. Sean, this is where you really now wonder about the new culture, the new infusion of enthusiasm for Alex Grinch in the defense. Things are starting to go a little sideways. Are you able to settle back in and get back on the same page as a defense? All 11 guys running to the football, playing together. Lincoln Riley said he wanted Grinch more than anything else to change the culture, change the mentality, and the players say he has. Quarterback draw, King ripped down by Ronnie Perkins, who's had a nice half. Freshman All-American last year with five sacks as a true freshman. Big body, athletic kid, did a nice job of wrapping up the tackle. Alex Grinch arrived in January, so we put the whole defense in right away. Figured we'd have seven months to teach it, so let's put it all in. And he thinks the defense has been learned very well by these Sooner, Sooner defensive players, and it sure seems like they've learned the lessons with their performance in this half. Half a minute to go. King of bullet. A little bit too wide for Terry Mark. Pat Fields had the coverage. Yeah, I'm sure Derek King wishes he had that throwback because that that he had a wide open an open receiver and he kind of threw this in a hurry kind of threw it off his back foot. He didn't step into the throw and it wasn't as accurate as he normally is. There's Dalton Witherspoon returning field goal kicker for Houston. He's from just down the road about 15 minutes away in Moore, Oklahoma. Homecoming for the Houston kicker, 34 yarder, up and good. Well, 26 seconds to go till halftime. Oklahoma now leading 21 to 10. Remind you, this great weekend of college football action continues with college football primetime tomorrow night. Great capper to your Labor Day. 8 Eastern time, number 9 Notre Dame against Louisville, live on ESPN and also on the ESPN app. Notre Dame off back to back. Double figure win season, 7 and 2 in season openers yeah. under Brian Kelly. You know, everybody, last year after the Clemson game that we did, the semifinal game, everybody's saying, oh, we told you, Notre Dame didn't de deserve to be, shouldn't have been in the playoffs. And, that argument sounded okay until everybody saw what Clemson did to Alabama right. in the championship game. And then you say, wait a minute, no Clemson was, was really, really good. No one was going to say Alabama didn't belong right. in the playoff, even though Clemson put it on them in the championship game. To the tune of the worst loss ever by Nick Saban, Alabama team. Witherspoon to kick off. And he just... Bounces it down the middle. Pretty effective squib kick. And the Sooners content to gobble it up. Troy James recovered it at the 27-yard line. You can check out our 
alternate angle Xfinity Skycam coverage of tonight's game streaming live on the ESPN app. So does that mean and I probably should have inquired of this with our outstanding producer Phil Dean and director Scott Johnson. Does that mean if you go to the ESPN app there's a place where you can watch this entire game from Skycam brought to you by Xfinity. That's correct. Yes. You would like that. Analysts tend to like Skycam. I like Skycam. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Can we watch this play from Skycam? I guess not. Well, there, there it, it is. is. There it is. <laughs> Thank you, Scott Johnson. I think they also don't have play-by-play -play voice on that on that channel. Oh, 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 another selling point. There's Trey Sermon out of bounds at the 46-yard line. So Oklahoma with a quality gain might attack now near midfield with 16 seconds to go. Yeah, you're definitely in range, and uh, Jalen Hurts just be smart with the football. That that last turnover was unfortunate for him, but they're in, they're in position right here. Still have two timeouts as well. One of the questions, especially the comparisons to Mayfield and Murray, the belief is Hurts arrived here is not as good a deep ball thrower as the previous two. Houston rushes for some twisting up front, well blocked by this new offensive line. Trey Sermon sneaks out, leaps up and over, goes out of bounds as he went over Kadarian Smith, the cornerback. And he's still hopping with eight seconds to go in the half. They're going to spot the ball at the 34 yard line. So long field goal range at the very least. Well, the play took a long time because it was a deep zone coverage by Houston. But with eight seconds now, you still have time for a quick throw. You can make a throw to the sideline, and with two timeouts, really, you can throw the ball anywhere, but you just can't hold on to it a long time if you're Jalen Hurts. Quick decision, get rid of the football. If it's out of bounds, bring your field goal. If not, use a timeout. Lincoln Riley calls the plays. Looks like a design run for Hurts. He better get down quickly or get in the end zone. He gets down, and they get a timeout with one second to go. Darian Smith nearest there for Houston. That's an interesting call. Well, it's a dangerous call. Oklahoma takes its second time out of the half. One second remaining. You know, if it was a short run, <laughs> if it was a short run, it would have been okay because he calls timeout. But the problem was there were no defenders, and Jalen Hurts just kept running. Well, it looked like a design run, which uh, to me is interesting. Yeah, it was only had eight seconds, and uh, you wonder if Jalen Hurts was actually looking up at the stadium clock. Yeah. Or if he just had the clock in his head to know uh, I got to be out of time here and get yeah. down. Well, and he didn't call the timeout. Lincoln Riley called the timeout. Ideally, if you're going to call that play, you would want your quarterback run, get down. You call the timeout. And, uh, Houston, let's not put ourselves because that was dangerously timeout. close to being out of time. Now Houston has called a timeout. You wonder if they're going to try to ice the new kicker here. Callum Sutherland. His only action last season was three kickoffs backing up. Austin Seibert. Lincoln Riley, I think he's made his name as a play caller, obviously, yeah. offensive coordinator in East Carolina. It was Dana Holgerson, among others, who recommended him to Bob Stoops. And Bob yeah. was looking for an offensive coordinator here. Dana says, I regret it now. He never beat Oklahoma <laughs> in seven tries when he was at yeah. West Virginia. But this guy is a brilliant play caller. They've had the best offense in college football the last four years. With him calling the plays two years as the offensive coordinator and two as head coach. And again, think about it now. He's had back to back to back transfer quarterbacks come into his program, and uh, the offensive production has been unbelievable. Houston takes its final time out of the half. They continue to try to ice young Mr. Sutherland, redshirt sophomore from Keller, Texas. The promotions department at ESPN loves this. It gives us time to remind you about the big doubleheader on ABC and the ESPN app. 3.30 Eastern Time, Texas A&M, number one Clemson. A lot of people think Clemson is going to just walk right through the regular season. The Texas A&M team has something to say about that. And then at 7.30, LSU and Texas in a top ten matchup. The Tigers number six and the Longhorns number 10 Saturday night presented by Wells Fargo. Yeah, well quarterback Sam Ellinger announced in the game we did the Sugar Bowl win that Texas is back. Well, we'll find out in a big way in that game against LSU because LSU is a good football team and Joe Burrow 
What a start he had in his first game. Five touchdown passes for the LSU offense. All in the first half. Yeah. And LSU's win over Georgia Southern. So Sutherland is 0 for 2. That one's way right. And Lincoln Riley told us yesterday it's kind of a coin flip whether it be Sutherland or Gabe Burkett. So you wonder if Gabe Burkett might get a shot at the field goals if they attempt field goals in the second half. Oklahoma outgained Houston 370 to 153. Here's Holly. Well, Coach Riley, how do you evaluate your quarterback, Jalen Hurts, in that first half, both passing and 127 yards rushing with his legs? Yeah, he's played well. You know, other than the fumble, he's really done a nice job for us. So we we got to get paid off a little bit more. We've we've dominated the game too much to not be up a little bit more, but we got to make key plays there, finish some field goals, finish some drives. Your defense was pitching a shutout until those final two drives. What do you evaluate that they've got to change there? Uh, they've done a good job. We, we didn't convert on a couple of third downs. We missed an open field tackle down here. But they've done a good job all night, especially holding the field goal there. That was big momentum there at the end of the half. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks. At halftime, Oklahoma 21, Houston 10. We'll send you to the studio for the halftime report right after these messages. The debut of Jalen Hurts at Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley's offense. You can look really good when your number one wide receiver, one of the best in the game, C.D. Lamb, is that wide open. 45-yard touchdown catch, and right now Oklahoma. You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. Non-conference season opener for these two teams. Houston out of the American. And Oklahoma. There's the four straight outright Big 12 titles, and it's the Sooners. In the words of their coach, Lincoln Riley, dominated the first half, but lead just 21 to 10. They will get the ball first to begin the second half as Dalton Witherspoon will kick off for the University of Houston. Trey Brown back deep. Bounce down the field and into the end zone. So let's take a look at tonight's Pacific Life game summary. And Todd Blackledge, Jalen Hurts, the focus starting the night, and he had a terrific first half. Yeah, I mean, 13 of 15, he threw to nine different receivers. He ran for over 125 yards. The only mistake he made was he lost that fumble that, that led to. Uh, the last score, the field goal from Houston, but other than that, he was terrific. 13 out of 15 for 174. And two touchdowns. And Hertz rushed for 128 yards in a score. Trying to throw on first down. He was pressured. He dumped it off to Trey Sermon. And he's ahead for about a five yard gain. And of course, the uh, Big story as well for Oklahoma. Much improved defense. Yeah. We thought uh, there was a chance. I think you and I are both believers that coaching can make a difference. Absolutely. And, and I think that we saw that defense start off great. They got a little sideways there on De'Ari King, made some plays. And then that last drive, and uh, Lincoln Riley mentioned it, when they held him to a field goal, uh, that was a defense kind of getting back together, getting back on the same page, and, uh, and getting a much needed stop. On second and five, Hurts has a man wide open. It's Nick Basquin spinning around. Didn't retreat to give back the first down yardage he had gained. There's the 39, first and 10. A lot of people wonder, look at that, 19 plays of 10 or more yards. They're averaging over 10 yards a play for the game. And, you know, Jalen Hurts, you ask, how's he going to adapt to this offense? Has he developed as a quarterback? When you hit nine different receivers in a first half, and you spread the football around and you can see him finding secondary receivers and outlet receivers. That speaks of his development of a, as a quarterback. We talked about these two teams were among the very worst defensively last year and giving up plays of 10 yards or more. Second and third Oklahoma and Houston behind only UConn in doing that last year. Oklahoma's cleaned it up the Houston defense still with a big problem. Hertz runs to the 44 yard line. Again, that's what he gives you. I mean, the, the pocket collapses, the protection goes away. It's good coverage down the field, but Jalen Hurts still turns it into a five yard game. It's 
So it'll be third down and five. Two minutes into the second half. Houston felt like it built a little momentum in the second quarter. Dana Holgerson spoke a few moments ago with Holly Rowe. We'll try to continue that here in the opening series, and they'll get a three and out as Hertz throws incomplete. Intended for C.D. Lamb with Demarion Williams in coverage. They love to throw the back shoulder fade in this Oklahoma offense, and that's what that was. And Jalen Hurts just a little too wide on the throw. It's actually third and five now. They were three out of five on third down in the first half. Hertz was two out of three passing on third down in the opening half. Plenty of time, a quick slant and a completion. Charleston Rambo. Rambo lunging for the goal line. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Beautiful quick slant route in the back going out of the backfield is going to pull the linebacker out of the underneath coverage. Open lane for Jalen Hurts to hit him and then you see the acceleration of Rambo. He runs past three Houston defenders after the catch. Hit in stride and never slowed down until he got to the end zone. And for Jalen Hurts, his third touchdown of the football game. Having a tremendous debut. For Lincoln Riley in the Oklahoma Sooners. There's Callum Sutherland. He's missed a couple of field goals. And he's been perfect on extra points. He missed two field goals in the first half. Oklahoma missed two field goals all of last season. Austin Seibert went 17 out of 19. Rambo, redshirt sophomore from Cedar Hill, Texas, with his second career touchdown. Back in Norman, Oklahoma, with the Sooners leading Houston 28 to 10 here in the third quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Gabe Berkich kicks off after the Sooners touchdown. It'll be a touchback. Bryson Smith didn't try to field it. And we've made this point tonight about Jalen Hurts only being here a little over seven months. But the reason that's so significant is because the two guys before him, Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, both had three years in this Lincoln Riley system to understand the nuances of it. And so a crash course that Lincoln Riley had to take Jalen Hurts through. And obviously he has picked it up very well and very quickly. It's interesting talking to Lincoln Riley. You asked him, you know, how much you're going to change what you've done here in the past. Yeah. Coaches always change and add wrinkles, regardless if they have quarterback changes. Every year they're adding something or maybe taking things away that didn't work. And he said that they wouldn't change very much from what they've been in the past. The Eric King hands it off inside to Kyle Porter. I thought the interesting thing. He says, we, you know, we don't put in particular plays for him. What we try to figure out as we watch him practice, and there are flags down now with some extracurriculars at the end of the play, is what is he comfortable with, particularly in the passing game? What can he process right. well, and what does he not process as well? After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 32. 15 yard penalty down to the end of the run automatic, first down. Larian Turner yell, guilty of the personal foul. He said sometimes you watch practice day after day and then you go watch the practice film and you realize that a particular passing route combination was designed for it to go to a particular receiver yeah. but he keeps throwing it somewhere else you wonder okay maybe he's not comfortable right. throwing it to the primary receiver and then we change the play or we get rid of it right and you can adjust things within the passing concepts the one thing I do think that he has done and changed is we've seen Jalen Hurts run the football between the tackles more then we saw Kyler Murray do, and of course Baker Mayfield, they didn't call that play for him. Marquez Stevenson knocked around but stayed on his feet and got nine more. Houston looked like it found a little rhythm on offense at the end of the half. Their first four drives at 34 yards total. The last two at 119 in all 10 of their points. 
They started to settle down. Dana Holgerson, I mean, he's been around and he's been around Oklahoma. I mean, he knows their people. He couldn't beat them when he was at West Virginia, but he's familiar with them, even though it's a different defensive system. A lot of the same people that he faced last year in Morgantown. He calls the plays. And a handoff to Porter, and he got wrapped up immediately by Ronnie Perkins. Loss on the play. Well, that was good, solid defense because you say, why didn't De'Ara King pull that on the read? There were two defenders outside that he wasn't going to go outside with the ball either. That was just good, fundamental defense by Oklahoma on that play. A big play call here for Coach Holgerson. Rare short yardage formation for Houston. Usually they spread you out, and it looked like the left guard flinched. Yeah, Houston was trying to go with a longer count to draw the penalty, and they jumped themselves. On start, offense, number 65. Five yard penalty, third down. Gio Pancotti, a newcomer. Played in three games last year at Texas Tech before he transferred to Houston. They brought in a couple of transfer guards. Justin Murphy, number 72. Has played at Texas Tech and UCLA. They needed bodies on this offensive line. And Condi and Murphy once together at Texas Tech. They're the guards on the field right now. Third down and six. King, plenty of time, long throw. Going for Courtney Lark. And it wasn't all that close. Parnell Motley running in coverage for the Sooners. Daniel Holgerson is going to punt now. I think if they would have gotten a completion and gotten closer to that marker, he might have gone for it here on fourth down, just knowing that they're going to have trouble stopping Oklahoma on a consistent basis. But fourth and this long, he's got to punt the football. Yeah, the penalty was a killer. Here's Dane Roy with C.D. Lamb back deep. Lands near the near sideline and is downed at the 16-yard line by Cole McGowan. Here's Holly Rowe. You guys were talking about the relationship that Jalen Hurts is trying to build with Lincoln Riley and how they're adapting that offense. And it's also very interesting. Lincoln Riley is the head coach, obviously calls the plays, but he's in every single quarterback meeting. He said one of the things we've done is we keep that room sacred. So when other coaches come to visit and people want to learn about our offense, I never let them come into meetings with the quarterbacks. Because I need them to be vulnerable in that room. I need them to be able to tell me, hey, coach, I didn't see it or I didn't know that. He's like, I don't want guys to tell me what they think I want to hear. I need them to be very vulnerable. And that's why he keeps that room very private so that trust begins to build. Yeah, that's important because the quarterback's got to tell a guy, I don't like this play either. <laughs> and that's right. when a coach gets rid of it. That's part of the process we're talking about. Here's Kennedy Brooks. Cross midfield and wrestled down from behind by Javarius Owens, the safety in his first game at Houston, who's had a busy night. 39 yards on the run for Kennedy Brooks. Yeah, Kennedy Brooks has had a pretty quiet night. Watch Creed Humphrey gets a block. He turns his man right in the hole. The right guard, Tyrese Robinson, with a nice block, number 52. And uh, again, just the combination from a running standpoint of Kennedy Brooks, Trey Sermon, and Jalen Hurts. Wow. You mentioned their running game underrated. They led the nation in yards per rush last season. 6.57. They're over 11 yards per rush tonight. Here's Brooks again. And he sidestepped the hit, got more yardage. He was a big reason why they had that nation leading average last year. He averaged 8.87 yards per carry last season, second in school history. There is a flag down on the play. Only the great Greg Pruitt back in. 1971 had a better rushing average per carry in a season. Personal foul. Offense number 54. Walking out of bounds. 15 yard penalty. First down. Marquise Hayes, the new left guard. Well, that's Bill Biedenboe, the offensive line coach, giving him a little piece of his mind. Just you got a great drive going. You're mauling him up front. We don't need that penalty blocking out of bounds. We just we talked about the relationships and the connections between these two coaching staffs and 
Edenbow has a history goes back a long way with the Dana Holgerson Hal Mummy Mike Leach connection to Marion Williams the injured player. Well the national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Here in Norman Oklahoma tonight. Sooners certainly a contender to win a national championship. They have to be encouraged by the much improved defense at least so far against the Houston team. That was one of the highest scoring in the country a year ago. And a smooth debut for Jalen Hurts as an Oklahoma Sooner. 922 to go third quarter. It's 28 to 10 in favor of the Sooners. And they have first and 17 at midfield. Hurts dumped it off. Michael Jones stacked up at the Houston 45, still well short of the first down. Todd, I know you admire Bill Beatenbow, one of the great offensive line coaches in the country. We talked about the connections. This air raid offense goes back to Iowa Wesley yeah. under Hal Mummy, and Beatenbow was the first center on that team. That's right. I mean, and Mike Leach was the offensive line coach at that time. Beatenbow was a backup center, the starting center. Got homesick and decided to quit school. He became the starter, and that was the first year in 1991 when the air raid offense was introduced. Dana Holgerson played wide receiver at Iowa Wesleyan. Here's Jaden Hazelwood, the highly touted freshman, living up to his press clippings. He nearly scored a touchdown. He gives the Sooners a first and goal. Well, first of all, he does a great job of running his route and turning his numbers to the quarterback. And then this is what Lincoln Riley told us about this kid. Very physical guy. Breaking tackles, running through arm tackles, and turning a, a moderate gain into a good gain, a long gain. Good view of it from the progressive pylon cam. Two catches for the freshman Hazelwood in his collegiate debut. Hurts running away from the pressure from Grant Stewart, and he leaps into the end zone for an Oklahoma touchdown. Yeah, I'm just not sure you can script it any better for Jalen Hurts. He's finding different receivers. Receivers covered. He knows he can run the football in. And this Oklahoma offense under his direction. Clicking 543 yards already in the football game. And we've got just under eight minutes left in the third quarter. Well, they've scored five touchdowns. He's been involved with all five. The extra point up and good. By Callum Sutherland. Hurts is thrown. Three touchdowns and rushed for the other two. 18 out of 21 passing for 291 and three touchdowns. 13 carries, 136 yards. That's 10 and a half for rush and two touchdowns. And the only little blemish that lost yeah. Bumble in the first half. You no, know, and he made his presence felt in the weight room as Holly chronicled earlier as a leader on the practice field but you still don't know until you go out and play real games what he's going to look like how he's going to respond how he's going to react i mean he has he has really shown out well tonight as the starting quarterback for oklahoma well it wasn't all that long ago he was officially named the starting quarterback i think most people assume when he transferred here they might have been given some assurance he'd have the job that was not the case he had to win it from that man Tanner Mordecai, redshirt freshman, and from the most highly recruited true freshman quarterback in the country, and Spencer Rattler. Here's Jeremy Singleton. Excellent special teams coverage. Trajan Bridges, another one of those highly touted wide receivers covering kickoffs. There's Spencer Rattler, the freshman out of Phoenix, Arizona, the consensus number one quarterback coming out of high school this year. We talked to Jalen the other day and asked him about it. And he said, well, kind of brushed it off as if he thought he was going to be the yeah. quarterback all along. And we thought, well, maybe Lincoln Riley just said it was close because he wanted to build up the other two, not get them too dispirited. 
Lincoln Riley said no it was a competition yeah. when we talked with him yesterday he did say that and, and I believe that but I also know that he was named the starter earlier on the calendar than either Baker Mayfield or Kyler Murray and uh, there's Marquez Stevenson the catch and run and you know what Sean you, you have to do that if you're Lincoln Riley or any head coach in college football now the way quarterbacks are picking up and leaving and transferring and entering the transfer portal you have to keep it as competitive as you can and, and, and make everybody believe that they have a chance to compete right. or else you're going to lose guys. Well, the reason I believe Lincoln Riley will talk about it after this play. Mulba Carr has come in as the tailback senior out of Austin. The pistol behind De'Ari King who is running out of time. Got hit by Kenneth Murray as he threw it away. Boy I think King didn't realize how quickly he was running out of time because as we've seen all night he probably didn't realize how fast Murray is. Boy he really can accelerate. You're right at 240 plus pounds. I mean he can really go. And he gets to the quarterback faster than De'Eric King thought he was going to get there. Here's why I believe what Lincoln Riley said when he said it was a competition and it wasn't a foregone conclusion that Hurts was going to be the quarterback. He said if there was ever a time in the preseason we give the bulk of the reps to one quarterback it would have been this preseason because Hurts doesn't know our system right. but we did it. We gave everybody equal reps including the two freshmen because we weren't sure who the quarterbacks were going to be. Long pass intended for Keith Corbin and there is a flag down for pass interference against Pat Fields. Now Lincoln Riley is asking saying that he thought the pass was pass uncatchable. He comes from the tent. 15 yards towards the automatic first down. The problem was Pat Fields was in good position. They were in good position on coverage, but De'Ari King threw this ball back over the other shoulder. And as Corbin tried to adjust, there you see the grab of the jersey. It wasn't much, but it was the result of the ball being thrown to the other side and Corbin adjusting to the football. That's a, a penalty that Lincoln Riley doesn't like, and it's a gift for the Houston Cougars. Midway through the third quarter, here's Moba Carr spun forward by Ryan Jones, the tackler. Gain of six on first down for Houston. Carr was their second leading rusher among running backs last year behind Patrick Carr, who's injured and not here tonight. Ran for 325 yards a year ago to Carr. Somehow Houston has to generate some chunk plays. They got to get the ball thrown down the field. This is an explosive, potentially explosive offense. Only 177 yards of total offense. They've had no big plays throwing the football down the field. Which is why I think you could make the case that Oklahoma is clearly much improved on defense because this is a Houston offense that averaged 44 points last year. Quarterback back, outstanding receivers back. A lot of the same running backs have returned, although Patrick Carr not here tonight. That one was intended for Jeremy Singleton. That's another throw that De'Ari King would just misfire. He had an open receiver. He had good enough protection. And a normally very accurate passer missed again. And now it's third and four. And uh, again, a situation where Houston really has to convert. King, nine out of 16. They're one out of seven on third down. This is third and four. Their own 41. First down, the tight end, Christian Trahan. And Dana Holgerson thinks he has a chance to be really good. You know, when we saw West Virginia last year, they had a, a tight end, Trevon Wesco, that was a real factor for them, a very much of a force. He's bigger than Trahan is at this point, but Dana thinks he can become a really good player. And it was a nice job by De'Eric King climbing up in the pocket and just staying in there and keeping his eyes downfield. Second career catch for Trahan. The only other one was last year as a freshman in their Armed Forces Bowl loss to Army. Kyle Porter, the ball carrier, and it was a loss, 70 to 14. Houston started out last year seven and one, rolling right along, scoring a ton of points. Ed Oliver, their outstanding defensive lineman, a first-round pick of the Buffalo Bills, got hurt. And the defense couldn't stop anybody. They lost four of the last five, wound up firing Major Applewhite after two seasons. Brought back Dana Holgerson. 
crowd thought there should have been a holding call and there's a flag down as the deep throw is incomplete. Looked like a pretty blatant hold when you hear half of the 80,000 hollering for it. Justin Murphy looked like he ripped down Neville Gallimore. Excellent job by Pat Fields, the safety, reading the deep throw and getting There's back to help this corner. Play. Holding offense number 72. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 90. The fouls are all set. We play second down. I think Gallimore was, was he the guy who got held? And he oh. still roughed the passer. There's the hold right there in the middle of the, the line. And then at the end of the play, the late extra hit. That's a good call. Yep. I've been a little bit frustrated by being held. Gallimore, one of their four team captains. Kyle Porter up the middle to the Oklahoma 44. Here's Holly. Well, Neville Gallimore showing you some of his mean side there. It's actually his mean side that got him started in football. He is from Ontario and Canada, where it's not a real sport uh, all the time for college football. But his family was a big basketball family. He said, I'd go to the park and play basketball, and I would get in trouble for hitting everybody. And then I'd look over there and see guys on the grass playing football, and they wouldn't get in trouble for hitting anybody. So I was like, I want to be in that sport. So he has finally found a home. He doesn't get in trouble for hitting people, except for just that moment. He's a good player. Third down and three. They fake the run. Marquez Stevenson the catch. First down. Now Todd and we can ask Holly this as well if she wants to chime in. In preparing for the game I read a note about Neville Gallimore. He's the first Canadian to play in the U.S. Army All-American game. How is it an All-American <laughs> game if you have a Canadian? Not that the, you know, we're all about inclusion but. North American. It's an oxymoron, but it's the U.S. Army All-American game. I guess it North could be American. North American. I guess you're right. Yeah, Canada is part of North America. But it doesn't say the All North American game. He was very highly recruited out of St. Catharines, Ontario, near Niagara Falls. Over 30 offers. He chose Oklahoma over Ohio State and Florida State primarily. Deep throw, De'Aaron King, Stevenson trying to run under it, it's incomplete. And There's a penalty there. I mean, just totally unnecessary by Pat Field. He had the pass interference that extended the drive earlier, and that, I mean, the ball's thrown out of bounds. It's a bad throw by De'Aaron King, because Stevenson was open, and he overthrows him out of bounds. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, a late hit. Defense number 10, 15 yards penalty automatic, first down. Now my question would be did Stevenson kind of did they almost go after each other and collide maybe because Stevenson went down it looked worse on his end but he sort of turns toward fields right there doesn't he. I don't think so. You don't think so. Yeah. Bill Lamagne doesn't think so either. As, an Patrick back just, judge. as Patrick Fields just came off the sideline there Alex Grinch didn't yell at him didn't get in his face didn't get upset all he said was that makes no sense. Send him to the back of the bench. You're extending drives. You've got control of a game and you're inviting a team to stay in it. With you. That's, that's the problem here. We're Mark already is stripling the freshman from Houston, Texas. Nice play, tackling Mo Bacar for a one yard game. You're already fighting all the perceptions about your defense if you're Oklahoma, and you've done a lot of really good things tonight to build on, but you just can't afford to do things to hurt your own cause. Fields has a couple times on this drop. And if Fields offers an explanation, well, Stevenson came at me too. Alex Grinch does a no excuses. No excuses is right. That's one of his models he's preached for the whole time he's been here. Mulba Carr inside the 10. Mulba Carr's given him a little bit of power running. He, he's not fancy. He's just running north and south. Really good blocking at the point of attack that time. And you know, you've got to account for Kenneth Murray, and they were able to take him out of the play. And get the first down. 12 play of the drive. They stick with Mulba Carr, and he has a touchdown for the Houston Cougars. Senior from Austin, Texas. His eighth career touchdown. All of them rushing. See, this time, here's Ken. Here's, here's Murray. He's right there. You just run inside of him. Let him rush up the field. Take him out of the middle of the field. The center, Braylon Jones, with a nice block on the middle linebacker that was left. Houston takes advantage of the penalties and turns it into a touchdown. It's 
Dalton Witherspoon on for the extra point. Out of the hold of Dane Roy, the punter, and the kick is good. A costly penalty on fields, lack of discipline on that drive defensively for the Oklahoma Sooners. Mulva Carr, originally from Liberia, became a U.S. citizen a couple of years ago. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear from end zone to end zone. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. Well, Witherspoon kicks off for Houston down to the goal line to Trey Brown. And he's tackled at the 20 by Garrison Vaughn and Todd one of the big stories of this opening weekend and has continued tonight with Jalen Hurts performance the performances yeah. of the notable transfer quarterbacks and these were just the most <clears throat> notable ones the only quarterback that didn't win was Kelly Bryant it had great stats but they lost at Wyoming kind of one of the surprising upsets of the weekend but other notables Austin Kendall who was competing with Kyler Murray he's now at West Virginia won his opening game as the starter there was able to play right away but that yep. is a big trend right now in college football Help Neil Brown win his Mountaineer debut as head coach is James Madison after the run action wide open receiver Charleston Rambo taken down in Houston territory at the 46 yard line by Gleason Sprewell, the returning starting safety out of Surprise, Arizona. Wow, what a what a beautifully designed play. You know, Jalen Hurts has already run for over 130 yards. He's showing run all the way. He's got the ball tucked. And at the last minute, he pulls it back out and finds an open receiver in Lee Morris. Or actually Rambo, I'm sorry for the for the nice catch, but just beautiful design on showing run to the last minute. These plays are so well thought out and so well executed that big thing under Lincoln Riley these last four years, they have receivers who are so wide open. Here's Trey Sermon. They go back to the running game. He gets a first down, got banged out of bounds at the 34. And Dana Holgerson has himself to blame, perhaps, for the fact that he is going up against a Lincoln Riley offense tonight. Yeah. Because Lincoln Riley was a backup quarterback at Texas Tech, Mike Leach, when Dana Holgerson was an offensive assistant. And Dana Holgerson said, I went to Mike Leach and said, please make this guy a student coach because we can't even practice when he's running the offense in practice. Lincoln Riley said that was a little harsh. But once he did decide to give up playing, become a student coach, he said Dana Holgerson was a tremendous mentor to him. He said he learned a lot about offense and a lot about coaching from that man, Dana Holgerson. They have a long history together. Lincoln Riley's wife was the nanny of the Holgerson kids when they were all in Lubbock, Texas together. A lot of respect for each other and a couple really brilliant football minds. I'll trace back to Hal Mummy and Mike Leach. Juggling catch made by Nick Basquin. He goes down just shy of the first down at the 25. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, as you mentioned, Lincoln Riley's wife was a daycare provider for Dana Holgerson's kids when he was at Texas Tech for many years. In fact, they were so close that when they got ready to get married, Lincoln and his wife actually asked Dana Holgerson if he could have their children in their wedding. So there you see the kids there in the wedding with Lincoln Riley and his wife. Uh, Logan, Dana Holgerson's son, is actually a backup quarterback on this Houston team now, so they've grown a lot. Lincoln Riley said we were really, really, really close. You know, time and distance, they're not quite as close now just because they don't check in as often, but uh, seminal moments in their career's development. And on third down and one, Hurts, nice bounce to the outside. Off he goes again, shoved out of bounds. Just shy, no, it's a touchdown. After a little deliberation, the touchdown signal given. They've scored six, and he's been a part of all of them. And this is just a read by Jalen Hurts because this was supposed to go inside between the tackles. Did he stay in bounds? I don't know. That, that one's close. That right foot, I think, went out of bounds before the ball crossed the pylon or the plane. 
might have to bring in Bill on this one. This is from the officials hat who made the call for Bill touchdown. On the field is a touchdown that plays under further review. Looks like the. Here's Bill Lamagne speaking as we look at it from the progressive pylon cam. It appears to me that the right foot stepped out of bounds prior to the ball hitting yeah. the, hitting the goal line. So I think replay is going to have a challenge here, but they should be able to reverse this, put the ball short of the goal line. But it was a brilliant read by Jalen Hurts because this was an inside quarterback run in between the tackles, and he saw it and bounced it outside because the defense had caved in and almost got it to the end zone or did get it to the end zone. We'll find out momentarily. Now, my question, Bill, would be, you know, his right leg goes across the sideline, but it doesn't touch the ground. So as long as it's still in the air, is he okay as the ball continues to advance toward the pylon? The question you have here is, does he have to get the ball over inside the pylon here? If, if that ball breaks the plane, he's a runner, and it breaks the plane, he'll get the goal line extended. So this is a challenge for replay on this one. Well, that's what? my question here because his, you know, he's, I think he breaks the plane before his ball, his foot hits out of bounds, although the ball is a little bit behind him as he comes near the pylon. Tough call. Well, it's either going to be a touchdown or it's going to be inside the one yard line uh, for Oklahoma, but. For Jalen Hurts, it's putting him up over 160 yards rushing. If I could add, where he crossed, where the ball crossed the sideline is where the ball actually should be placed. Mm -hmm. Because as he ran and then he steps out of bounds, even though it's beyond the goal line, it's where the ball crosses the sideline. Right. And the ball was a little bit behind him by his right After hip. After review, number one went out of bounds with the ball in his right hand at the one-yard line. He does not get goal line extended. He's going to touch the pylon of the end zone. That's going to be first and goal the one-yard line. Well, give it to him again. All right, it's his night. He's rushed for 161. That is a career high. More rushing yards than he had in any game at Alabama. 14 carries. Oklahoma as an offense has had nine runs of 12 yards or more. His career high rushing at Alabama was 154. 2017 against Fresno State. Looked like he juggled the snap. Still uses that incredibly strong lower body to power to the end zone for a touchdown. Terrence Edgiston, the linebacker for Houston, saying, wait a minute, he didn't get in there. <laughs> so it's a different number one playing quarterback than he had last year. You're not going to call Kyler Murray on a quarterback sneak like that. But at 220 pounds, I mean, Jalen Hurts is just going to get in there and keep his legs, those powerful legs driving. Gets a little push from behind, I think, Sermon. And it's just find a crease and just keep driving. Those squats that we saw probably have something to yeah. do with his ability to power forward like that. They are checking to make sure it was a touchdown. Moving on the field is a touchdown. We'll extend the quarter and the try. So three rushing touchdowns, three passing touchdowns for Jalen Hurts. And here's Callum Sutherland for the extra point. Right down the middle, and that is the end of the third quarter. Oklahoma leading Houston 42 to 17. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Tomorrow, cap off this Labor Day weekend with some more great college football. Number nine, Notre Dame in Louisville at 8 Eastern time, live on ESPN and the ESPN app. Cardinals trying to bring their program back, turn to a very talented young coach, Scott Satterfield. Three Sun Belt titles in six years as the head coach at Appalachian after a long stint as an assistant there. Booming kickoff by Gabe Berkich for a touchback. And let's take a look at tonight's Pacific Life game summary. 
It's brought to you by Pacific Life. And there's the quarterback comparison. Disappointing night for De'Eric King, especially on this national stage. But not a disappointing night for Jalen Hurts, the 161 rushing yards, surpassing anything he did at Alabama. And he's coming up on his career passing high as well. He is 332. His career best was 347, 16 season against Mississippi State. Yeah. Just uh, an incredible start for him. Really, really has been outstanding. And, and I'll tell you what, just what I've seen through three quarters in the improvement of the Oklahoma defense, they're not all the way First there yet. Foul, legal blindside block receiving team number 54. A penalty been forced half the distance to the goal. First down. A new a emphasis different. in the rules this year is the uh, blindside block trying to take those away. And that's a. Uh, it's kind of a clear call, especially when the play is not even being returned. An easy call to make. Nathan Fox, the guilty party for the Cougars, and it's going to back him up. But I was going to say, Sean, I think what I've seen of the Oklahoma defense under Alex Grinch tonight, and they still have work to do and, and continue to improve, but they are positioned better to make a serious run of the national championship this year than either of the last two years because of that. Jalen Hurts may not win the Heisman, may not be the first guy picked in the draft, but they can win the championship with this team, I think, much easier. A lob ahead to Christian Trahan from De'Eric King. Sean White the tackle, but it's good for a first down at the 30. Holly? Well, speaking of Alex Grinch, after that last Houston score that was extended by those penalties from Oklahoma, he called the whole defense together over here and read them the riot act. He said, you guys aren't playing well enough to be out here with that extra stuff showing off. He wants them to knock it off and finish this game. He said, finish, finish, finish. His speech was so impassioned, the fans behind the Oklahoma bench got up and stood up and cheered. Mulba Carr. Find some running room. Houston scored on his last possession. There were 30 yards in Oklahoma penalties to help them along the way. Carr's been a force after not playing very much early in the game. That one's good for a first down to the Oklahoma 49. Yeah, Carr's giving him a nice boost, and he doesn't mess around. He gets those shoulders north and south and, and runs downhill, and he's got some power behind his pads. One of the Several reasons after watching this, Todd, I do believe the Oklahoma defense is definitely better. They came back with just about the same defensive team, which would make you a pessimist if you were an Oklahoma fan who watched a lot of these same guys struggle last year. And this is a Houston offense that was fifth in the nation in scoring last year. Brings back the quarterback, the wide receivers, a lot of the running backs. Is it going to be a very good Houston offensive team? Yeah. Yeah, they'll be really tough to deal with in their conference. They've got a tough schedule. They play their first four games in a span of 18 days. And this is the toughest on the slate. But, but I agree. I, I, again, I, I don't think that Oklahoma's defense is is a dominant defense and may never be this year. And they haven't forced a turnover yet, which is a big emphasis with Alex Grinch. But they are more disciplined and they are more sound than I saw them at any point last year when we covered the Sooners. Incomplete pass. Stevenson might have been looking at the defense instead of the ball. When we talked talk to Alex Grinch, said, you know, tell us about your defense. Said, First of all, it's effort based. And if you don't run to the ball, Kenneth Murray told us that. He said day after day after day, Grinch tells him it's all about the ball. That's yeah. the most important thing. Get to the ball and take the ball away. And he's a big believer in no excuses. He doesn't want to hear, well, the other guy messed up or, you know, the coach has got us into a bad call. Your big 12 players expected to make plays at a high level. Kyle Porter back in and running back. Eric King inside the 20. After paying attention to that tape that Coach Holberson showed him, Tyler Murray sliding down and getting out of bounds. He wisely ducked down after a 19 yard pickup. Eric King is, uh, he's not had as explosive of a game as he's capable of, but he's made some nice plays. It's almost like he bristles at the dual. Before the snap, Oklahoma takes his first time label. out of the half. Because it implies you're more of a runner, I think, than a thrower, and he yeah. wants to be known as a thrower, and he really is. But I think we've seen tonight when he runs with the ball, he's dynamic, and they need that aspect of it.
there's a new culture in College Station. Trevor Lawrence looks like a generational talent. We're back. We fight like tigers. Great doubleheader next Saturday on this Sunday night. Houston on the move, down 42 to 17. And Ronnie Perkins, another big play. He's been in that backfield a lot of the night. And he stopped Kyle Porter. Oklahoma leading 42 to 17 in Jalen Hurts' debut. He is co starred with Alex Grinch's defense. Hurts 20 out of 23 passing for 332 and three touchdowns. He's rushed for 161, nearly 11 yards per carry and three touchdowns. The Air King takes off running inside the five and taken down by Jordan Parker, who saved a touchdown. See, the problem for Oklahoma with these scrambles is they're playing man coverage. And when you play man coverage in the red zone and receivers are running crossing routes, you leave open lanes to run. So if you don't get home, if you bring an extra rusher and you don't get to the quarterback, there's a lot of green grass in front of him because your second level defenders are running in man coverage. First and goal, Houston. After a slow start offensively. They found a little rhythm since the end of the second quarter. It might have been a face mask there as Kyle Porter got spun around. No flag on the field. Kenneth Murray in on another tackle. He tackled by Kenneth Murray and Patrick Fields. During the last commercial break, we saw on the near sideline, Todd, Jalen Hurts talking to Kyler Murray. Yeah. Of course, Oklahoma, the only school to have two different quarterbacks win the Heisman Trophy in back to back years. And if you voted after this first full weekend for the Heisman Trophy, it might be Jalen Hurts making it three in a row. He's off to a great start. Out of the pistol. Porter behind King. And he got driven back. John Michael Terry. Murray in there again. We called him his name a lot. Kenneth Murray is just like a heat-seeking missile. I mean, he finds the football, and he's very fast. He accelerates to the ball so well. Well, Kenneth told us in our conversation earlier this week, Coach Grinch says it's all about the ball, and that's what he's done. Find the ball and attack it with great effort and speed. Porter's had a rough debut for Houston. 12 carries, 15 yards. Third down and goal, nearing 10 minutes to go here in Norman, Oklahoma. King pulled it down, didn't get far, perhaps just barely across the line. And it'll be fourth down and goal. Well, this was a design quarterback run, and Oklahoma was not fooled. They tried to bait the Oklahoma defense into thinking pass, but it's a design run. You see the pulling guard and the tackle. Oklahoma was not fooled. They had a lot of red hats to the football. The crimson hats. And now it's fourth down. And with nine and a half to go, Dana Holgerson's going to go for the touchdown. Oklahoma was 113th on defense on fourth down last year. Their opponents converted 20 out of 30. They throw a fade and a touchdown to Marquez Stevenson. Uh, they ran the same run action. They pulled the guard and the tackle. It was a little combination route outside and perfect throw over the outstretched arms of Jordan Parker, who was in coverage. They showed run the exact same run they ran on third down and then got the nice switch route out there. Beautiful throw by King. And the touchdown for Stevenson, who was a thousand yard receiver last year. The extra point up and good for Dalton Witherspoon. 9-11 to go. Oklahoma leading 42-24. ABC's primetime college football is brought to you by Pacific Life. 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. 
just going to go back and look at this touchdown because it was beautiful execution by the two receivers. Stevenson's going to run this route. Singleton's going to come inside, and the two defensive backs, they're going to switch their coverage. So Jordan Parker, who's outside, is going to stay outside. The problem is he didn't go back deep enough, and it was a perfect throw by De'Aaron King over his outside shoulder. And just perfect execution by De'Aaron King. It hasn't been his best game throwing the ball, but that was a beauty. Dalton Witherspoon kicks off. And it goes out of bounds, so... Houston will be penalized. Let's check in again with Holly. Well, I'm here with a very proud dad, I would assume. Adrian Hurts, your son Jalen with his debut today, and he's broken a couple records for the best debut in Sooner history. What were some of the emotions going through you as he took the field tonight? I mean, we're just happy for him. Uh, he's waited a long time. It's kind of like, you know, he's back where he was and where he, you know, you could say belongs. And so it's it's I'm happy for him and the team most important you know it's a great game and you know playing in Houston you know being from Houston so that's that's a little extra too. You're a, you're a coach. How have you appreciated the way your son has handled all of this, competing for this job here, not talking about it in the media, just doing it on the field? I mean you know it's it's it was a journey. It was hard, but you know he's you know I've always tried to tell him he's built for this. You know God put everything. You know. God does everything for a reason, and this was not an accident, you know, and it's just something that God had for him to go through. And so he's gone through it, and, you know, we're glad. You know, like I said, God doesn't make mistakes. Uh, your son tonight did such a tremendous job. At what point in this game did you start to kind of calm down or feel like, okay, things are going to be okay out here? Well, you know, being a senior, I've been through all that. Other than crying and stuff from USC, you know, we've been through that. Right now, he was ready to play. We talked, you know, before every game, he calls me before mine, and he called me before his, and we talked, and he was ready to play, and that's all, you know, I'm just ready to see it, so. Career high, career high yards rushing for him tonight also. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, I mean, Coach Riley said it, and, you know, he said on something, you know, they kind of unleashed him. And so, you know, it's a... It's a good thing, but for me, it's, you know, the passing has been really well. You know, he, he missed one or two, but, you know, it's been a great game, great game plan. So happy for the team, and Coach Riley did a great job. Thank you so much, Dad. I, I like it. The beast, the beast has been unleashed, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Jalen coached by his dad in high school. Both of these starting quarterbacks, sons of coaches. Yeah. Andre Stevenson has gotten in to see his first action. Number 29, junior college transfer from Cerritos in California. Ball ripped away by Derek Parrish, and Jalen Hurts called upon to make a tackle. Just ripped the ball out. I mean, literally. It's what Joe Cotham, the defensive coordinator, said about him. We visited on the phone the other day. He said he makes plays just because of effort. He plays so hard. And. Look at him fight off the block and just rip it away from Ramondre Stevenson. And it looked like Stevenson was protecting the ball. He had both hands, both arms over the football. He wasn't carrying it loose. But the guy they call Scrappy got in there and ripped it out. Coach Codlin said he's really not physically gifted, not particularly big or fast, but plays with such effort that he makes a lot of big plays, including that one there. Another big challenge now for this new look Oklahoma defense. A sudden change situation. Can they come out and get a stop now? And we've been praising them all night, but as this game goes yeah. along, it's a little less impressive right. what they have accomplished as Houston's last two drives. Have, defense that plays under further review. Houston's last two drives have both gone 87 yards and 12 plays for touchdowns. Well, they go to review. We'll make some money. 742 to go here in Norman, Oklahoma. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear from end zone to end zone. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. Fans did a good job tonight, Todd. You were noticing yeah. with the whiteout. They called for a whiteout, and uh, they all came. Most of them did dressed in white. Over a capacity crowd, 84,000. 534 the attendance 
official capacity here is just over 80,000. A little partial to my whiteouts, but I think this is a pretty good one. Are you saying Penn State is where they do it the ultimate. Mulva Carr. Ooh, that blasted Kenneth Murray in there again. That's his 12th tackle and fourth for a loss. He's had a sack tonight. Living up to the preseason Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year accolades. No, he's a guy now. If he continues the way he's, he might reverse a little bit of the trend with defensive players not getting drafted high off these Oklahoma teams. It used to happen on a regular basis, not so much in the last few years. Last year, you mentioned eight guys drafted, no defensive players drafted off this Oklahoma team. King. Marquez Stevenson. He goes out of bounds with a first down. Well, as you see at the bottom of your screen, Houston scored in four of the last five, and they're inside the 30 again. Remember, this is this is an offense that came back almost intact, and they were explosive last year. So my question now is, is the Oklahoma defense that much better, or did it just take Houston a little while in a new offense and in a prime time setting in front of a big crowd to find a little rhythm? I think they are still better. But I also made the point, I don't think they're there yet. They still have a lot of things to get better to correct. But they are better than what we saw last year. Deep throw. Lots of contact. Incomplete pass for Courtney Lark with Parnell Motley there. So I said earlier, clearly the defense is better. Yeah. So I'm going to go now with, I think they're better, but not quite as better as I thought they were an hour or so ago. They are better, but they still have a ways to go to, to be a championship, make Oklahoma a national championship contending team. But Love I've seen, hat. I've really seen enough it. good signs yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. I like when you get the view from the, the ref hat. They should have had you wear a uh, camera in your hat when you officiated the Georgia Spring game back in April. Houston with a chance to make this a game as much as it's felt like all night long they've been dominated. You think they might pick up the speed of the operation here between plays. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of urgency here. Now King is uh, trying to get them over the ball. Dana Holgerson taking a while to communicate this play in. Wouldn't you say, Todd, this has to go faster? Yeah, well, it has to because they're down 18. So, yeah, absolutely it has to go faster. He's calling the plays, but they need to find a faster way to get it in than uh, all the fly swatting over there. They come after King. He managed to get out of the pocket, but Kenneth Murray ran him down. You're not going to run away from him. He had 155 tackles last year, most by a Sooner since 2007. Curtis Lofton had 157. Houston takes his first time out of the hat. With 5.33 to go, and Oklahoma leading 42 to 24. Tomorrow, Labor Day, a baseball doubleheader for you on ESPN starting at 1. Texas and the Yankees, and then at 4, the Houston Astros and the Milwaukee Brewers. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Big day today for the Houston Astros. Justin Verlander, another resume enhancer on his way to the Hall of Fame. His third career no-hitter did it today against the Toronto Blue Jays in Toronto. Struck out 14. Through a season high, 120 pitches. <laughs> Fourth down and three. Houston, after the timeout, trying to throw a bubble screen, and it's incomplete. And Oklahoma will take over on downs, intended for Jeremy Singleton. So the Sooners hold. Great inside pressure. Neville Gallimore, we talked about, he's got to have a big year for this team. He dropped 30 pounds coming into this season, and he got quick pressure and forced a bad throw by De'Eric King on that one. I know you're a big baseball guy. Yes. All of America saw you yawning at the uh, College World Series on national TV, but you are a big baseball guy. Yes. Um, I knew you were going to get me back. At some have you ever? Yes, I had over. to. After the Xfinity <laughs> sky cam comes with no play by play. <laughs> Here's Tanner Mordecai now in relief of Jalen Hurts, who's had an historic debut as an Oklahoma Sooner. 
Mordecai edged by Hertz to be the starting quarterback starts with a handoff to Trey Sermon. So let's put the capper on the night for Jalen Hurts. He set the Oklahoma record for total offense by a player in his Sooners debut. Five hundred and eight total yards of offense. The record for a Sooner in his debut was Baker Mayfield three ninety six. So he shattered that record. That was against Akron in two thousand fifteen. And Jalen is also the second Sooner to throw for at least 300 yards and rush for 100 or more in the same game. The other person who's done it as a Sooner, Kyler Murray, and he did it twice last year on his way to the Heisman. Sermon weaves across the 30. Well, we thought we would see Jalen Hurts run the football more in this offense. 16 carries, 176 yards. Some of them were. You know, just him improvising and making a play. Several were by design. And, uh, and then he threw the ball. And I agree with what his dad said. His passing looked really good tonight. He looked comfortable in the pocket. He found secondary receivers. He hit lots of different guys, which tells me his vision was good tonight. Pass incomplete intended for Braden Willis. Mordecai, the new quarterback, redshirt freshman from Waco Texas Midway High School played in two games last year and then redshirted completed two out of his four passes Lincoln Riley likes this young man yeah. a lot said some ways in terms of temperament he reminds him of Baker Mayfield to the point where every now and then he has to tell Mordecai to relax a little bit so here's Reeves Munshaw with the first Oklahoma punt of the night that was another story he's Kicking in a game for the first time collegiately after four years from Austin Seibert. A pretty good punt. He's been sitting around for three years waiting for the chance. 41 yarder for the red shirt sophomore from New Braunfels, Texas. We're back in Norman, Oklahoma. And this is the beginning, Todd, of a difficult opening for the season for the Houston Cougars. Yeah, I mean, four games in 18 days, and, and really of all of them, Washington State, of course, Mike Leach. But this is the one that's going to be the toughest because right after playing Washington State on a Thursday night, they play at Tulane. And, uh, you know, that's a conference game. And so for them to kind of get on the right start conference-wise, that game on a short rest is going to be tough. Pierre King pulls it down. Deep throw. Is he inbound? Tremendous. Corbin. Yes, the Corbin. catch. And I don't see anybody on the Oklahoma sideline arguing. Toe tapping on the sideline. I don't know. I don't think his feet were down. I, I think, think we've had enough replay reviews for tonight. Crowd want to stop it. They don't they get did. it. Yes, they did. No, they, they did. Got it. I wonder if Lincoln Riley challenged that. Well, he is the well out of the field. Catch. That plays under further review. And it was a wonderful effort by Corbin, but I think his feet were off the ground when he caught the football. Ref Cam again. Bill Lemonnier, what say you? I see a foot dragging the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't think that other foot came up off the ground. The tremendous effort. Does he have possession? Well, he starts with control, and if that foot's in bounds and he maintains control going to the ground, you're going to have a catch. So right now, here's the critical point. You know, he's starting to get control. That left foot is dragging, mm -hmm. and it was in bounds. Wow. Minimally, yeah. this is going to stand. It may be even be confirmed. Officials from the American on the field and Big 12 replay in the booth. That will not happen after uh, the beginning of next season. Right. It will all be from the same conference. Showed the schedule for Houston. They are expected to contend. There are two divisions in the American. They were in the preseason media poll, picked second, but. Right behind Memphis, only one fewer first place vote. A lot of good football teams. We saw Cincinnati the other night yep. beat UCLA. 
obviously we know what UCF can do and has done in recent years Memphis and Houston yeah, Memphis with a, an upset of an SEC team beat Ole Miss in week one 15 to 10 here comes the critical decision after further review the ruling on the field will stand will be a first down in Houston yeah, I, I think the kid deserves that yeah. after that effort. If that in doubt, effort. you make a play like that, give yep. it to him. Absolutely. Play on. Keith Corbin, senior from Beaumont. Had 10 touchdown receptions last year. And after he didn't have any in his first two years combined. You know, the other thing that's happening here. We know and we talked about Dana Holgerson is a really good coach. The Eric King's a really good quarterback. This is his first game with this team. Half of his assistant coaches, this is his first game with them. So it's taken them a while offensively to kind of get their feet on the ground. Well, Bacar, boy, he's been a revelation here in the second half. He got banged down by Nick Benito. And when we talked to Dana about you know, how do you think your team's doing with your new system and also a new defensive system, that they had to learn. He said, you know, I think they're doing very well. But you really learn about everybody when you play a real game. Yep. So this will be an opportunity to learn quite a bit. And as you said, not just the players, but he's kind of evaluating yep. his own assistant coaches, half of whom he hasn't worked with, to find out what they're like on game day. I thought it was interesting, too, the comment that Lincoln Riley, the conversation we had with him yesterday, you know, he made the comment, you know, this isn't like high school where you have scrimmages or an NFL where you have preseason games. You just go out and play your first game, and that's it. And he said he would really be in favor yeah, yeah, yeah. of joint practices with another team or, or two. Or a preseason game. Yeah, or a preseason mm -hmm. game. And I think most college coaches would be in favor of something like that. 3.07 to go. Houston still down by three scores. Here's Kyle Porter finally finding some running room in a lot of it. He's down to the 11-yard line. Jaden Davis, a true freshman out of Fort Lauderdale and Under Armour All-American in high school last year at St. Thomas Aquinas, made the tackle for the Sooners. Bonito, the defensive end, the rush defensive end, just came too far inside. Lobbed up and incomplete. Intended for Courtney Lark. With Jaden Davis, that freshman in coverage again. Incoming recruiting class that includes Jaden Davis, ranked number four by ESPN's recruiting experts. That's three straight years with a top ten recruiting class for Oklahoma. Recruiting very well under Lincoln Riley. Porter again. Slides down, lost the ball. It looked like he had hit the ground, and they are going to blow it dead just inside the five. On the field, the runner was down before the ball became loose. It'll be third down. So he'll try to go quickly here as Houston is running out of time. 2:20 remaining. Play fake by De'Aaron King, and he scores a touchdown for the Houston Cougars. You were talking about Jaden Davis, the young corner. The young corner kind of got fooled on this play. You're going to see him out here. He's going to get tied up with a wide receiver and lose sight of De'Aaron King. Not going to know where the football is. Right there he is. He's getting blocked, actually getting held a little bit by Trahan, the tight end. But he's got to stay outside. And on a couple of these runs by Houston, we've seen that lose that edge in defense. And again, that's getting back to the discipline. Over 100 yards rushing is De'Aaron King. Both starting quarterbacks ran for 100 plus. Dalton Witherspoon, the extra point. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, our producer Phil Dean, our director Scott Johnson, our terrific crew. You know what's amazing? We have every member of the technical crew back a year ago. That says a number lot about Number 11 of the receiving team has switched to number 13. That's number 11 of the receiving team. Oklahoma has switched to number 13. Another important bulletin. <laughs> but uh, that says a lot about the leadership of yeah. 
Phil Dean and Scott Johnson. I'm surprised because they're really not that easy to work with. But nonetheless, the crew comes back. Here's an onside kick attempt. Steve Lamb and a couple other Sooners indicating that they have it. Look like well, they I, did and they do. I think if you're both teams and both head coaches, you've got a lot of really good things to take away from this game. If you're Dana Holgerson, your team came back in the second half and competed. Your offense settled down. You still got problems defensively. If you're Lincoln Riley, you're thrilled with what Jalen Hurst the did. The ball was recovered by the receiving team. Offside, kicking team. That five-yard penalty be added to the spot of recovery. First down. And you're happy with a lot of the things that your defense did. They're, they're still got a lot of work to do, a lot of room for improvement. But you're happy with a lot of the things they did. Yes. Stay tuned for the Ford wrap up after the game. Which is the rate this is passing by will be approximately a half an hour from now. <laughs> what a night for Jalen Hurts. 508 total yards, 20 out of 23. Passing for 332 and three touchdowns. He ran for 176 on 16 carries and ran for three touchdowns. Tanner Mordecai, his second series. Gave it to Ramondre Stevenson. And it was tackled by Gleason Sprewell. Gleason's going to use another timeout. Well, I want to go back to the baseball promo. Okay. Because we have the Houston Astros on tomorrow, and a lot of people still watching this in Houston. I think the Houston Astros are going to win the World Series, by the way. Just okay. Throw that out there. But Justin Verlander, our crack crew, they give us so much information. And this just happened to you, the no hitter. His third no hitter. And I said, You are a big baseball guy. Your son's being recruited right now. Ties in with Bob Feller, Cy Young, and Larry Corcoran. Larry Corcoran. Four, three career no hitters. Have you ever heard of Larry Corcoran? I've heard of Larry Coker. Because, yes. I've not heard of because Larry what Corcoran. I think might be happening here is Ben Ward, who provides us with this information from the truck, might have a buddy named Larry Corcoran somewhere who he promised. He would get mentioned on the air tonight. Is that huh. a possibility? <laughs> I think it's a possibility. He said actually the guy pitched in the 1800s and was 5-3. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, he was 5-3 and pitched with either hand. A little baseball lesson for you. Ramondre Stevenson, his best run as a Sooner in his debut. I never heard of Larry Corbin, have you? No, I have not. <laughs> Minute 50 to go. And in no hurry now, the Sooners. We asked if we might see Spencer Rattler, the true freshman. Yeah. I, my guess would be if, if things go well with Jalen Hurts, they'll play Spencer Rattler in four games, but maybe try to redshirt. Right, because I mean, you can do that. The rule that came in last year, you can still play in four games. And you can redshirt him. Stevenson tackled by Peyton Turner. Houston takes its final time out of the half. With 1.23 to go. That's the same thing with Houston. I mean, their backup quarterback, Clayton Toon, had to play, start the last two games because of the injury to De'Ara King, but he appeared in five games, so he lost his red shirt. Dana Holgerson would love to red shirt him this year, with King being a senior if he can. So it won't be a victory in his. Houston head co co coaching debut for Dana Holgerson. Meanwhile, here's the upcoming schedule for Oklahoma. They'll go to UCLA in a couple of weeks, an off week before they get involved in the uh, Big 12 conference schedule with Texas Tech with a new coaching staff. Yeah, Matt Wells from Utah State. Let's well, out of the field to see Holly Rowe. We have not had too many injuries tonight, which is a good sign, but the one injury has been significant to Shane Beamer, one of the assistant coaches for Oklahoma. You might notice he has got stitches above his left eyebrow, pretty good egg on the noggin. That's because he wasn't very smart, and after Jeremiah Hall, his H-back, scored the first touchdown of the game, he decided to headbutt him with his helmet on. Unfortunately, Shane did not have his helmet on, so the coach does have an injury tonight. Mm. Wow. Of course, he's the son of the uh, Hall of Fame coach Frank Beamer. Thought Dad would have taught him a little better than that. That about a guy with a helmet on. I don't think I ever saw Frank do that. Nope. 
Here's Ramondre Stevenson into the end zone for a touchdown. And a really nice patience by Stevenson. He's going to get the ball and just find the lane and then cut up inside. Watch the patience on this run. Still the starting offensive line in the game. Creed Humphrey with a nice block at the center position. Left guard Marquise Hayes with a nice block. Stevenson had the fumble or the ball ripped out of his hands his first carry, but he's made up for it here in the, the last part of the ball game. And Coach Riley says he's their most powerful runner. 232 pounds. Callum Sutherland, the extra point. It's 49 to 31. Oklahoma picking up right where it left off, not just last season, but seasons prior to that. 686 yards of offense for Oklahoma. Since Lincoln Riley arrived at the start of the 2015 season as the offensive coordinator, they've played 55 games now with this one tonight, and they've topped 600 yards in offense 21 times. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. It, is it really amazing. is. They're almost to 700. Probably won't get the ball back here to get over 700. They've done that six times since Lincoln Riley got here. Burkich, another touchback. So Oklahoma top going for its fifth straight Big 12 title. Texas thinks it's better. They were picked second in the yeah. Big 12. How do you see that one shaking out? Well, I think that's the main competition for Oklahoma. And Sam Ellinger, I think that offense is is going to be a really good offense, a powerful offense in the Big 12. Defensively, Texas lost a lot of players. Now, I, when we had them in the Big 12 championship. They did a good job against Oklahoma. They held them to 129 yards rushing, really slowed down the running game. Uh, they've got athletes to match Oklahoma, but Oklahoma is still clearly the team to beat in that league. Chandler Smith has come in at running back. Very popular player in the Houston program. A walk on just put on scholarship a couple of weeks ago. You can see, not very big. They list him at 5'8 and 195, and both might be a little bit generous. He was impressive in the preseason. Junior out of Spring, Texas. Under a minute to go. And they give Smith another carry. Chandler Smith. Very promising second half for Houston offensively. Dana Holgerson, his first year back at Houston, first time as the head coach, and uh, a lot of positive things to build on. Well, he was asked, you know, why would you leave a Big 12 head coaching job, Power 5 Conference of West Virginia, to go to Houston? And he feels like Houston has a chance to be great. And I think all the investment that they're making in athletics, not just football at Houston. I think the idea is that they would like to get into a power five right. conference at some point, and they're certainly attractive. With so many things going so well on their campus. Jalen Redmond made the tackle on Chandler Smith. And Houston will not snap it again. What a debut for Jalen Hurts. History making in his first outing as a Sooner. Lincoln Riley now 25 and 4 as a college head coach. Coach Hurts, very proud. And Jalen's one of those young men, Tom, when you talk to him, you can tell he was raised right. Oh, yeah, as well. No doubt. And right on cue, here's Jalen with Holly. Well, Jalen, as you ran out of that tunnel for the first time as a Sooner tonight, what crossed your mind as you took the field? Um, you know, I think all, all week trying to tell everybody to kind of play. To, to our standard, the standard that we set in practice, the standard we step, set for ourselves, and we just got to do a better job of it, I think. Um, it's kind of kind of sloppy at times, so we got to do better. As you scored your first touchdown and you started to hit some nice throws, how did you settle into this offense in your first time? Um, it's just playing football. It's great, great surrounding cast around me. O-line did a great job. The Super did a great job. It's been open. Um, we played good football at times, but it was not, a, it was not consistent enough. You seem super disappointed right now, and yet you set a new school record for yards in a debut, and you're also the first Oklahoma quarterback in school history to throw for over 300 and rush for over 150. Mm -hmm. So can you be somewhat happy? I got to go talk to my boys. We got to get right. We got to get better. We got to take more steps. 
when you look back on this game tonight, what do you think is the thing that you've got to clean up most? Um, sloppy play, really trusting it, um, and just executing better. We got to execute better. All right. What does the future hold for you guys? What what kind of feeling do you get from this debut? Hopefully, hopefully um, we can learn from our mistakes from this game and um, take that next step next week. Okay. Can I just get one smile? You played well tonight, Jalen. You got to do better, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All right. You gave me a baby one. I'll take it. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Has to do better. Three passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns, three incomplete passes. <laughs> the Ford wrap-up is coming up after these messages. Welcome to the Ford wrap-up. Oklahoma victorious in its season opener, 49-31 over Houston. Let's head down to the field. Here's Holly with Coach Lincoln Riley. Well, Coach Riley, your quarterback, Jalen Hurts, had a good debut statistically, but he's not happy with his performance. How did you assess it? Yeah, we won. You know, we had some great moments where we really played all together as a team. Uh, didn't finish the way we wanted to. A little sloppy there, certainly in the second half, the end of the third quarter there. So, uh, typical first game. There's a lot of good. We're never going to get tired of winning. Uh, so that's always a great thing, but we certainly have a lot to improve on. What, if any, satisfaction did you take that Jalen seemed comfortable in this offense right away? Well, I felt like he would. I mean, that's 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 how we want our guys to play, and that's part of why he won the job here. And so, you know, it's it's game one. And he did a good job. There's a lot of things he's got to get a, get better at. A lot of things our team's got to get better at, and that'll be our focus. A lot of the questions coming in this into this game were surrounding your defense. Good first half. How do you assess kind of where they were after the end of this game? Yeah, just just got to finish. You know, the penalties killed us. We busted a couple of calls there at the end, where we had some great calls that we got to execute better. So, I love how we're flying around. I thought the mentality was good. And certainly some first game things though that we got to do better and do better quickly all right any good takeaways like that you thought you were really good at like give me one good positive thing I just feel like it's a lot of negativity right now <laughs> yeah hey, yeah no winning, winning's awesome we did a great job we ran the ball well you know extremely well there thought we did a pretty good job until the end of their run game we got a lot of pressure on King now he's he's tough because he's hard to get down but I thought we were very disruptive defensively the entire night okay good so a win's a win right that sounds better right that sounds better thanks, thank Holly. you coach thanks Derek good seeing you it does seem like a group that's not very satisfied <laughs> yeah. just put 686 yards on the board and we mentioned a historic night for Jalen Hurts in his debut uh, he was tremendous yeah he really was and you know he talked about we got to get better we got to you know fix some mistakes but he didn't make very many mistakes only three incomplete passes he ran when he was supposed to run he extended plays he did a nice job he had the one mistake where he fumbled the football but everything else he did just move the football, move the offense, made good decisions, hit different receivers. He, he was spectacular, I thought, Sean. It seemed very comfortable in what is a new offense for him. You mentioned Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray had much more preparation much time on this campus to get indoctrinated in Lincoln Riley's offense. He just arrived about eight months ago. All right, this is a little complicated, but bear with us. Over the last 15 seasons, the highest level of college football, 1,059 times there's been a player who's passed for 300 with three passing touchdowns in a game. 519 times over the last 15 years, there's been a player who's rushed for 150 and had three touchdowns in that game. But both of those things have only been done twice. Johnny Manziel back in 2012 yeah. and Jalen Hurts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, that kind of sums it up. I mean, it was a, an incredible debut for Jalen Hurts. They ran the ball well. He directed the offense. And like we said, you know, in, in a short crash course in this air raid offense, very different than the offense he played in at Alabama, uh, just a, a tremendous start for him. And I liked what he said when we visited the other day. He talked about how he just won the job a few days ago. Coach Riley said it was a tough call, whether it was he or Tanner Mordecai. And Jalen's answer was, well, they said that last year. And what happened with Kyler Murray? So I yeah. think it's a similar kind of thing there. If there was any question about who the starting yeah. quarterback is going to be here, there is no longer. What a performance. You know, and he said over and over to us, I've seen it, him, him quoted as saying this ever since he's got here, I'm a different quarterback. I'm not the same quarterback as I was when I first started at Alabama. And I think he's right. I think he's a much better, more polished quarterback. And he said, I was built for this. This is why I came here. He took a big step forward on that on this first night. He sure did. An impressive win for the Oklahoma Sooners. 
49 31 the final score here in Norman. You've been watching the Ford wrap up sponsored by the 2019 Ford Expedition Stealth Edition. Now for Holly Rowe. Todd Blackledge and our terrific crew, uh, crew Sean McDonough saying so long from Norman, Oklahoma.